this one might. Live from Skelly Stadium in Tulsa, it's the 54th meeting between Oklahoma State and the University of Tulsa. The OSU Cowboys trying to stay in the nation's top ten. Tulsa hoping to pull off an upset in one of the biggest games that Tulsa's ever played here at home in Skelly Stadium. The Tulsa Golden Hurricane taking the field now, and the Oklahoma State Cowboys are already out there, and we're just three and a half minutes away from kickoff. This is John Snyder along with Ed Murray, and Ed, everybody's excited about this game. Obviously, the Cowboys next week go to Nebraska. They want to go there 4-0. Tulsa comes into this game at 1-2. and two. Tulsa will be favored to win every other game that it plays this year. They could finish 9-2 and two if they win tonight. There's a lot riding for both teams. There certainly is, John. Uh, they have maybe one tough game left at, at Texas Tech. Uh, anytime you go down and play out a Southwestern Conference team, you're trouble. But really, they're looking at 9-2 and two if they beat Oklahoma State. For the Cowboys, uh, you go to Lincoln, Nebraska. That's a tough place to, to win in. If you win there, it's a great bonus. If you lose, you, you lose, you take it. But the thing is, if you win here, you stay in the top ten. You lose to Nebraska. You don't drop that far, and you can work your way back up with a couple of home games against Missouri and uh, Colorado. However, if you lose here, you drop down, then perhaps lose to Nebraska. You could drop out of the top 20 altogether. We've got about two and a half minutes before kickoff. We want to thank some people who have helped to bring this game to you tonight. This game is being brought to you through the courtesy of the Sports Time Cable Network, the New Cox Cable, and Multimedia Cable Vision. They're also pleased to announce that it is now available, Sports Time, as part of a basic service bringing you the best of mid-american sports coverage including major league baseball big eight basketball wrestling gymnastics baseball professional boxing hockey bowling and much much more that's sports time cable mid-american sports network and we thank those folks because they've helped us put on the game tonight there you see the captains meeting out in the center of the field for oklahoma state six captains for the university of tulsa four and we'll get the coin toss for you in just a moment they've had it who will have the football to start this game tonight tulsa's won the toss john and they will receive uh you don't see that too often anymore. Usually uh, with the new rule about giving the option in the second half, most teams, when they win the toss, they'll take the option. But uh, Tulsa wants football. Well, I'm sure that John Cooper feels that his offense has got to play better than it's played the last couple of weeks. He's very upset with his offense. Steve Gage, his sophomore quarterback, played so well last year as a freshman. As a matter of fact, he was the offensive newcomer of the year in the Missouri Valley Conference. Steve, by his own admission, has not played well this year. He's, he's not made the read on the option on the corner like he would like to make it. He's not passed well, and they're looking for him to come around a little bit. It's interesting, John, that uh, both coaches kind of blasted their star uh, earlier this week. Uh, John Cooper in the papers said Steve Gage. I mean, he came right out and said Gage did not read the option well against Arkansas, had a pathetic game, and uh, Pat Jones comes out and blasted Sean Jones for fumbling the football, saying, I'm not going to play a fumbler, but you will see Sean Jones starting tonight. So both coaches, I think, trying to use some motivation, get on their players, have the press ask them about those things, and they have to face up to it and work harder on it in practice. There you see the Oklahoma State team. Larry Roach with his back to you. will be doing the kicking off. He, of course, is the best field goal kicker percentage-wise and statistic-wise in the history of the Big A Conference. And the Cowboys take the field, and Roach will kick off to start this game tonight. Larry Roach, uh, if you saw our pregame show, enjoys kicking off this year. Kevin Godfrey did the kicking off last year. Godfrey could boom every kick right through the end zone, and that's what uh, the coaches were looking for. But this year, if you kick it through the end zone on the fly, the ball comes out to the 30. Now, Larry can put it through the end zone, but he's a lot more likely to put it down uh, halfway into the end zone around the goal line. So uh, uh, being in there kicking, he says it, it keeps him in the game, keeps him involved, and it uh, makes his field goals a lot easier. Well, back for Tulsa to receive the kickoff on the goal line. On the left side is Johnny Horton. On the right side is Chris Vaughn. As you look at him, we take the other shot from the other end zone. Oklahoma State against the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. As things stand right now, this may be the last game between these teams for several years. The contract runs out after tonight. We may talk a little bit about that more at halftime. We're set to go from Skelly Stadium. The Oklahoma State Cowboys ranked number 10 in the country. It's also trying to pull off a major upset, looking ahead to a season in which they will be favored to win all the rest of the games they play. Horton is the big kickoff return man for Tulsa. He's returned three so far for 48 yards. A 16-yard per average is longest so far this season, 29 yards. The capacity here at Skelly Stadium, just over 40,000. It's homecoming here. They may have nearly 40,000. It might be the largest crowd in Skelly Stadium history. We'll have to wait and see. Larry Roach is set to go to work. He checks things with the officials, and we're underway, and the ball blows off the tee. By the way, John, Tulsa is on a 16-game winning streak here at Skelly Stadium, dating back to 1981 when Southern Illinois beat them. So they won 16 in a row. A homecoming against Oklahoma State. They're 8-4-1 here at Skelly Stadium. Larry Roach with a kickoff. It'll come up a bit short at about the five-yard line. That's Horton with the football. He cuts back at the 15, and he is nailed right there at about the 18-yard line, and that's where Tulsa will start to work. Mark Moore, dad on uh, the special teams. Moore also starting on uh, the defense for the Cowboys. 
He was a special teams player last year, but uh, when Oklahoma State surprised Cincinnati with six defensive backs, Mark got in the game, and that one intercepted a pass, set up uh, the clinching touchdown. He's been a starter ever since. There you see Steve Gage, the sophomore quarterback. Uh, he has been the quarterback the last couple of years. Now, Gordon Brown and Rodney Young, who are both fullbacks, are actually in the backfield together. And as we talked before the game, uh, they're halfbacks, basically, even though they're both listed as fullbacks, it's the option offense. Gage looking to throw over the middle. He's got the man down the field to about the 30-yard line. The man who makes the catch is number 89, and that should be the tight end, Kevin Andrews, who makes the catch for the University of Tulsa. On this play, I'm not sure if you're going to see it, but Rod Brown, the strong safety, came up to play the option. You can see him right there in the screen. He was going the wrong way. The tight end just slipped in right behind him. Brown coming up to uh, cover the option, and it burned him. Well, he was open there across the middle for a nice gain. It's a first down, and Tulsa has the football now. Out to the Tulsa 29-yard line. John Cooper right there looking on. His eighth year as the University of Tulsa coach. Steve Gage is the quarterback. Maybe changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Makes the option, and the pitch goes back around the 30, up to the 40-yard line, and out of bounds at about the 41-yard line. Yeah, that was just great execution of the option play that time. They got the Cowboys to commit. James Ham came in and took the quarterback. And the linebacker just kind of got lost on the play and uh, Gage threw it out. Let's see the linebacker here. I believe it's for Ricky Adams. We'll watch right here. See, no, it's Jim Krebs. You saw Krebs come up to take the quarterback along with James Ham. When two guys are on the quarterback, that's going to leave the halfback open. Gordon Brown is the man who carried the football, and he is the leading rusher for Tulsa coming into the game, averaging almost seven yards a carry. Tulsa with two straight first downs out to the Tulsa 41-yard line. Gage looks to throw, has some time in the middle. He's got the receiver down inside the Oklahoma State 35-yard line. Eric Porter is the man who made the catch for Tulsa. And where's the Tulsa offense been the last three games they're putting it together tonight? Hey, it's a great defensive struggle, isn't it? And I tell you what, three plays, three first downs for Eric Borders. That is his first catch of the year. Uh, Ronnie Kelly, the flankers, their leading receiver with eight. Borders first. Now, he was a defensive back last year. He's been switched back and forth. This year, he's playing offense. And they ruled that he went down at about the 36-yard line of the Cowboys, and that's where Tulsa has its third, third down of the game. First and 10 for Tulsa at the Oklahoma State 36-yard line. Gage looking to throw again. Got some time being chased out of the pocket. Goes to the left side. Here come the Cowboys. Gage is going to run it. He goes out of bounds at about the 34. Leslie O'Neill finally running him out of bounds. That time, the secondary of Oklahoma State doing an outstanding job. The drop-ins, instead of rushing that time, uh, drop back Ham and uh, David Webb in there in place of Harry Roberts. Uh, both dropped back and covered the flat area. Gage wanted to hit a quick out, and it just wasn't there. And finally, Leslie O'Neill ran him out of bounds. So it's a two-yard gain for Steve Gage, the sophomore quarterback at Tulsa. And it's second and eight for the Golden Hurricane inside the Oklahoma State 35-yard line. Perhaps, again, changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Gage this time is rolling right. He's gone for all of it. But there was a mix-up on the route that he was going to run, and Adam Hines was out there and could possibly have intercepted that ball. Number seven for Tulsa. The man who was out there is Tony Johnson, and he went out to the sideline, and Gage obviously was expecting him to go to the end zone. I'm not going to say it's a freshman mistake, but uh, Johnson was is a freshman. He's uh, in there in place of uh, Craig Petty, who normally backs up Eric Borders at the split-in position, and he just kind of stopped out there. you got to say good defense uh, on the play as he was smothered on the sideline. He was looking for the short route. Gage was thinking the long route, so that makes it third and eight for Tulsa now at the Oklahoma State 34-yard line. Gage is the quarterback back Brown and Young are the setbacks gain is about two down to the Oklahoma State 31 yard line we'll see what Tulsa does now Jason Starofsky will come on and he will try the field goal now he has a 56 yarder to his credit so far this year Young the ball carrier leaves Starofsky has only missed one time and it's been 50 plus yards he hit a 56 yarder this one from over 50 seven of eight on the year he is perfect so far this season inside the 40 uh, four for four this will be a 49-yard attempt as they will spot the ball at the 39-yard line. Starofsky set to go to work. It's low, but it may have enough. It is just wide off to the left side, so Tulsa has a good drive, but comes up empty. And you see John Cooper right there. Very happy, though, that his team moved the football and did a pretty good job. But that's the same thing that's been happening to both teams in the last two games. Uh, they drive it, drive it up the field and either make a field goal or miss a field goal. Cooper's just, I think, more or less saying, all right, we moved it, but uh, come on, let's, uh, let's get in the end zone. You can hear John Cooper as his team came off the field saying, hang in there, you know, things will get better. Now, Rusty Hills will bring his team out, and the Cowboys will go to work from their own 31-yard line. We've got 13 minutes and four seconds to go in the first quarter of this game. Oklahoma State trying to remain unbeaten and remain in the top ten in the country. 
Rusty Hilcher, the Oklahoma City Southeast senior, leads his team out. He has Kelly Cook and Sean Jones behind him. There's the give to Jones, and there's a whistle. It may have been a procedure penalty against Oklahoma State. And I know Pat Jones is cringing on the sidelines. He was very upset with the 10 penalties for 79 yards last week against San Diego State, and we do have motion on Oklahoma State. It, it, you might notice they ran the tailback. Last week they ran the fullback on the first play. I talked to him about that, uh, some of the offensive linemen, and they run the tailback on the first series primarily to see how the defensive line will react. They want to sit, run the tailback since that's their bread and butter play and see how the blocking schemes are going inside. They're not just trying to, to kill it. They, they're not trying to go for a home run. They just want to see in the opening how everyone's blocking. Pat Jones on the sidelines. Rusty Hilzer brings his team out. Now it's first and 15 for the Cowboys from their own 27-yard line. They give us to Jones this time on the left side. The game is maybe one and a half or two, but Tulsa pursues it well. Over there on the right side of the Tulsa defensive line, bottom is number 97, Byron Jones. He is an All-American candidate. Uh, his first start for the Hurricane was in the last year's Oklahoma State game. He had 12 tackles, five solos, and two tackles for losses. So he plays the Cowboys tough. You remember that game a year ago in Stillwater was a defensive game all the way as the Cowboys went at 9-0. A lot of tackles on both sides. There were 15 fumbles in that game. Rusty Hill has his team at the line. It is second and 13 for Oklahoma State. Rusty looks to throw. He's got the safety valve out to the left side. Pass is complete. Sean Jones across the 40, across the 50. Jones down the side, on inside across the territory for about the 33. Great play. That play has been perhaps the best offensive weapon so far this season. Uh, it's worked to uh, Kelly Cook on the fullback screen. It's worked to Thurman Thomas. And now it works to Sean Jones. We're going to get a look from the end zone. Rusty will look at the post pad over the middle. He had Jamie Harris coming across the middle. Nice fake there. You see Derek Burton and uh, Tucker getting out in front. Good block nice right block. there by Tucker. Sean Jones uh, goes down the sidelines, cuts back in, gets another good block. I believe that's Jamie Harris downfield, springing Jones for another seven or eight yards. So the Cowboys now on that nice play to Sean Jones on the screen pass. First and ten, the ball is on the Tulsa 33-yard line. No score, just under 12 minutes to go first quarter. Rusty Hilcher gives to Jones. Looks for running room. Nice move by Jones. There wasn't much there, but he got inside the 30 to about the 26. It's interesting that the experience of the OSU offensive line is on the right side with uh, Ralph Partita and Paul Blair, but the Cowboys have been doing a lot of running to the left with uh, Chuck Shanklin, Derek Burton, both excellent offensive line, but they don't have the experience of Partita and Blair. You'd expect them to go right, but they have great success this season to the left side. Sean Jones, the senior out of North Little Rock, comes out of the game, and Thurman Thomas, the out of Texas will be in there now for Oklahoma State. Great things are expected of him. He's played pretty well in the first three games. Second and three for the Cowboys from the Tulsa 26 yard line. This is Thomas left side and he is up right at the line of scrimmage. Good play by the right side of that Tulsa defensive line. Number 96, Brian Bruner is the nose guard, a 6'2, 256 pounder from Tulsa. A Bruner was injured in the Oklahoma State game a year ago. He uh, had a knee injury and missed most of the season. You see, he just beats his blocker. Uh, Ralph Partita right there, and uh, got Thurman Thomas in the backfield. So the Cowboys now, actually it was a loss of one, so it's third and four. Balls at the Tulsa 27-yard line. So Hilger will have to make things happen right here, or we may see Larry Roach. Three wide receivers now for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Jamie Harris goes in motion. Hilger looking to throw, complete over in the end zone. Not in the end zone on the left sideline. Malcolm Lewis is the man who made the catch over there inside the 20. And that'll be another Oklahoma State first down. The Oklahoma State wide receivers have really been doing something after they catch the ball. We had twins to the bottom side of the screen. Rusty fakes the play and goes to the left where Malcolm Lewis had one-on-one -on -one coverage. And watch the move right here, reminiscent of the Blue Bonnet Bowl when he uh, faked the Baylor defender out, finally coming over to make the tackle for 41. Tony Buford uh, out of St. Louis, a 6'2", 210-pound junior linebacker. Malcolm Lewis has not really played as well this fall as he did last year. Perhaps he's about to come alive tonight. It's first and 10. The ball in the Tulsa 15-yard line. Cowboys moving here in the first quarter. We have no score. Rusty Hilger gives to Thomas for run room and gets through the line of scrimmage. Nice move and really poor tackling also Tulsa's part. The ball's down around the 10. The play before setting that up, when you have the three wide outs, you expect a pass. They passed on the first time. They had the three wide outs again and gave them really the same look, but this time gave it to the tailback. Thomas, watch the move right here. A good cut. Avoids the tackle of Xavier Warren, who's Tulsa's leading tackler. Gets into the secondary. Kevin Lilly down there on the bottom, number 77. He, too, is an All-American Lilly's candidate. another guy they feel is an All-American candidate here at Tulsa. Again, they don't feel their defense has played as well as it really can in the first three games of the season either. Clock is moving. 9.58 to go first quarter. Second and four 
for the Cowboys. Inside the 10-yard line, the pitch back goes to Thomas. We may see the halfback pass. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. Jamie Harris is an handicap. That's the first time the Cowboys have shown that all year. Thurman Thomas to Jamie Harris. It is Jamie Harris's first touchdown reception of the year. And I know I've been talking to him in the locker room after games. That is something that's really stuck in his craw. That's his 16th consecutive game that he has caught a pass. That's, he's only played in 16 games the Cowboys. So every play, watch this well set up. Kelly Cook, a great block to give Thomas time to throw the ball. He lays it up there. Jamie Harris had beaten everybody. The Cowboys lead it 6 to nothing. Larry Roach with the extra point, and the Cowboys lead it 7 to nothing. The extra point is perfect, and Oklahoma State has taken a lead. It's 7 nothing here with 9.48 to go in the first quarter at Skelly Stadium. We'll return to our football game in just a moment. Every day. Back at Skelly Stadium, Larry Roach, the Oklahoma State place kicker, about to kick off because the Cowboys have just scored back deep to receive the kickoff for Tulsa, Johnny Horton, and Chris Vaughn, who is number 25. The Cowboys marching 69 yards, the final nine yards, a halfback pass from Thurman Thomas. To Larry Roach. Johnny Harris for the touchdown. Set play. The last one that nine yarder. There's a kickoff. Vaughn may take it in the end zone. Let's see if he brings it out. He does. The five, the 10, cuts back, the 15 is hit, and squirts ahead to about a 17 yard line. So Tulsa will set up shop on the 17 yard line. John down there to make that play again is number 44, Mark Moore, as he did the first kickoff. Here comes the touchdown play again, capping 69-yard drive, seven plays. Thurman Thomas pulls up and just lays it out there, and John, you're telling me in the uh, intermission there, you could have caught that one, perhaps. Oh, Jamie made a nice grab, though. <laughs> Maybe not. Jamie Harris was open, though. They really did a good job of fooling the defense on that one. Steve Gage brings his team out, starting to work now at the 17-yard line for Tulsa, first and 10. Gage looking to throw. Gage is freshly tackled by a couple of Cowboys in there. David Webb leading the charge. Uh, he and Harry Roberts substitute at the right end position. It's what Oklahoma State does best, I believe. Blitz from the offside. You'll see Webb comes in untouched. Steve Gage doesn't seem to the last possible minute. He did see some pressure coming in from the top, and I believe that's number John Washington is also in there, too, to help make the stop for Oklahoma State. So that's a loss right there of 10 yards. It's second and 20. The ball's back at the eight-yard line, and the Cowboys right now have got Tulsa in the hole. Nine minutes, 11 seconds to go in the first quarter. There's the kick right up the middle. It's over the 10-yard line. The game is perhaps four. Number 29, Gordon Brown, is the ball carrier right there. And it'll be a third and 14. You're likely to see that play quite a bit tonight. Uh, running behind left guard John Kaspersky. He's an All-American candidate as well. Off uh, in front of him, though, is Leslie O'Neill, Oklahoma State's All-American. Because that's a great matchup, right guard against Oklahoma State's right back. Edge lifts the defense over. Looking to throw. Safety foul out there. Young is the man who caught it. He gets by one tackler, finally goes out of bounds. He's still not up to the 20 yard line, and Tulsa's probably going to have to punt this one away. Rod Brown making up for an earlier mistake, coming up from a strong safety position to force that play and force the punt. By the way, David Webb sacked his first of the year on that play previously. Richie Stevenson will come on to do the punting. He is the youngster out of Moore, Oklahoma, who is also the backup quarterback here at Tulsa. Pretty good punter. His average is right at 40 yards a kick, and he will be punting right about from the goal line as it's fourth and 12 for Tulsa. He's had one return about 80 yards, which has wrecked his uh, net average a little bit down to 32, but he'll get him off about 40 yards. He's longest 54 yards. Malcolm Lewis is the man who is back deep for Oklahoma State. He comes up right about the 50-yard line inside, makes the catch and gets nothing. So the Cowboys, though, start out first and 10 inside, the yard line at about the Tulsa 48. I believe that was Bobby Riley. Bobby Riley, not Malcolm Lewis. I had my numbers mixed up. Bobby's Malcolm number returned once last year. He has been in once or twice, but got injured at Arizona State. He took a shot, and I don't believe the coaches want to risk it. Uh, Bobby Riley showing great hands and some great moves. He's a little bit smaller than Malcolm. Malcolm's a big target. The guys could kind of see him as they came down the field. Riley can dip in and dip out, and uh, you need that on punt return. Bobby leaves the game, and Malcolm Lewis will be in there at the receiver spot for Oklahoma State, the sophomore out of Houston. This is Rusty Hilger, the senior out of Oklahoma City. Sean Jones is the tailback, and Kelly Cook is the fullback. The pitch comes to Jones, looks for running room. Nice cutback. Got five or six yards, but it really wasn't much there. Again, Kelly Cook, who's an outstanding year blocking from his fullback position, uh, in, sprung it initially, then Jones cut back into the center of the field. Watch uh, Kelly Cook at the bottom of the screen if we can see it. You can't see it, but uh, he allowed Jones to cut back through. By the way, that last punt, 31 yards for Stevenson has given the Cowboys a great field position. 
second and three for Oklahoma State. It's also 41 yard line. The Cowboys lead it 7 0. There's a halfback pass from Thurman to Jimmy Harris in the end zone for nine yards, and that's the Oklahoma State score. This is Sean Jones again across the 40, down to about the 35, and that'll be an Oklahoma State first down. Jones looks determined to have a good game tonight after uh, he was very upset. There's no more, more upset than Sean Jones last week with the fumbles. Uh, he was very happy that they won the ball game and uh, was very down on himself despite picking up nearly 100 yards, being all big eight, but I'm sure he's determined to have a great ball game tonight. Thurman Thomas comes into the ball game. He will spell Jones momentarily. Thomas, the freshman out of Missouri City, Texas, who very highly touted coming into the Oklahoma State program. Clock is moving now with seven minutes, 23 seconds to go for a quarter. Rusty Hilder works on first and ten, rolling a little bit right, trying to find Lewis down there. And Ball is thrown away, and the Cowboys look at a second and ten. I believe it would have been an incomplete pass anyway. Malcolm uh, stepped out of bounds, if we see on the replay. The Cowboys hadn't shown as much uh, three-wide receiver offense uh, so far this season as they're showing tonight, John. And you can't see it. I believe Malcolm Lewis went out of bounds. It would have been incomplete. Luckily, it was not intercepted, making a good play of the ball, number 32 for also who's uh, in there replacing one of the uh, safeties. 32 is uh, Robert Estes, a uh, senior out of Tyler, Texas. Second and ten for Oklahoma State. The ball to Tulsa 36 yard line just outside the 35. Seven minutes, 16 seconds to go for this quarter. There's the give to Thomas. He is smothered by a couple of people. Xavier Warren is one of those in there to help make the stop to Tulsa. And the other guy who was in there who played very, very well. Number 56, who is Jimmy Summers in there from one of the linebacking spots to make the stop. Mr. X, uh, Xavier Warren, 18 tackles last week against Arkansas. He had 16 against the Cowboys last year. He read the play perfectly, shot through a gap, and was there to stop Thurman Thomas. Cowboys come in with a record of 3-0. Oh. It was 45-3 over Arizona State, 31-14 over Bowling Green, and last week, a squeaker, 19-16 over San Diego State. Third and 15, the loss was 5, so the Cowboys are back right at the Tulsa 40-yard line. Nickel defense for Tulsa. Rusty Hildred looks to throw, rolling right, and he goes down. Number 96, Brian Bruner making a second big play of the ball game. Uh, just came charging in. Tulsa was expecting the pass. They had the five, maybe six defensive backs in the game. Watch Bruner from the nose guard position. Play off the block of uh, David Tucker beautifully. Thurman Thomas missed him. Thurman didn't ever saw him coming. Should have gotten some leather on him. But uh, instead, Bruner gets the quarterback sack, I believe, the fourth against Hilger uh, this season. Kerry Cooper will come on to do the punting now for Oklahoma State, averaging 38 yards a kick, but he has very good hang time. There have been very few returns against him this year. He's also put a lot of them down right on the one-foot line. That one goes into the end zone. It's also going to start out first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Five minutes and 48 seconds to go in the first quarter. The Cowboys lead at 7-0. We'll be back in a moment. When Ford back at Skelly Stadium, Steve Gage, a sophomore quarterback at the University of Tulsa, leads his team out of battle now. It's first and 10 for Tulsa with five minutes and 48 seconds to go in the first quarter. First and 10 from the 20-yard line. Gage is straight ahead. The ball squirts up in the air. The Cowboys have got it in the backfield. That Adam Hines, I think, the Hines is the man who came up with a fumble. That may have set an NCAA record for fumbles. It's fumble dancing in the air. Up the field. That one really flew down the field. Adam Hines who uh, had eight interceptions last year, gets a wild fumble. Let's see the handoff, attempting to go to number 29, Brown. Brown, Brown, and the ball just popped straight up in the air. Someone could have caught that thing. They could have advanced it, but on one hop, Adam Hines recovers it. The Cowboys in business at the Tulsa 31-yard line. What a break for Oklahoma State. They lead it 7-0. If the Cowboys can punch it in right here, that would certainly mean that the momentum, which right now is swinging in Oklahoma State's favor, would be even more so. Five minutes and 45 seconds to go. Hilger brings his team out. As you look at the Oklahoma State sideline, Kelly Cook is the fullback. Sean Jones is the tailback. The give to Jones. Now back to Hilger. This is the flea flicker. Has he got somebody open? He does. Jamie Harris, touchdown, Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State going to the... Oh, boy, they're going to the bag of tricks. Two consecutive plays, but there's a penalty flag on the play at the 40-yard line. And it looks like... Looks like they're back. coming back. Looks like they're coming back. It ruins a great looking play. And we'll check the official. It's at the 40. The and Sean Jones is, is waiting everybody back. It has to be, I would guess, a holding holding penalty holding. against Oklahoma State. That's what generally happens to wait for the official's call. So there's also a Tulsa player injured in the end zone. Let's see. Holding the call against Oklahoma State. And here we go on the replay. Let's see if we can pick up the holding. 
Rusty Hilger will hand off to Sean Jones. Jones will flip it back to Hilger. The flag coming down at the 40. That is where Hilger is standing right there. I think Derek, Burton. The right. Derek, Derek Burton, Burton is the man who would be killed. He was holding the Tulsa man out. You could see there. And a great pass to Jamie Harris. It would have been the second touchdown of the game for Harris, but they bring it back to 41. So it's first and 20. I tell you what, for a long time, Cowboy fans have been wishing the offense would open up. Well, I think you're seeing some opening up offense. We still got 538 to play in the first quarter, and we've already seen two wild-looking plays. John Cooper there on the sidelines, obviously breathing a sigh of relief. That would have put his team down 14-0. There is an injured Tulsa player down on the field, and we really can't see what his number is because of the people gathered around him. Sean Jones so far on the night, four carries for 22 yards, plus he had that pass reception uh, that carried him deep into Tulsa territory and touchdown drive. Tim Gordon is the man who was shaken up for Tulsa. Last year, he was second in the nation in punt returns, and he does their punt returns uh, for the Golden Hurricane. We're going to see the end of this play here. He'll be hit by his own man, and he tries to get to Harris. He runs in to his own player, and that is quite a collision. Tim Gordon is down in the end zone. He is sitting up now there. Trainers and doctors still attend to him in the end zone. Albert Myers was the quarterback who came across, and they collided, and you saw that Gordon went down very hard, apparently just shaken up, and he's going to leave the field now under his own power, but whether or not he comes back, of course, uh, remains to be seen. Leslie Elger so far in the night is two for three, 42-yard average, or 42 yards. It's 21 yards for a throw, and you'll take that in any ball game. Of course, Herman Thomas is one for one with a touchdown, and Hilger uh, almost had a 31-yarder, but it had to come back on the holding penalty. And that's already two penalties on the Cowboys, and uh, both of them have been damaging. Tim Gordon leaves the field, as you see, they're under his own power. That means that Jesse Morrow is the man we expect to be in there at that cornerback spot for the University of Tulsa. So with the penalty, the Cowboys now face a first and 20. The ball is still at the Tulsa 41-yard line. Five minutes and 38 seconds to go. Hilger brings his team out. Kelly Cook and Sean Jones set behind him. First and 20. Sean Jones looks for running room on the right side, gets around the corner. There wasn't much there, but did a good job of gaining a little over eight yards, almost nine. Malcolm Lewis throwing a key block down the sideline. We'll see the replay coming up right here. Nothing fancy on this one. Just a straight handoff to the tailback. Look for your hole on the right side. Coming up right here, you see the block by Malcolm Lewis. Springs uh, Sean Jones for another four or five yards. He's five carries over 30 yards now. They're still attending to Gordon on the sideline. Into the game, Steve Hill, the 6'2 freshman out of Northeast High School in Oklahoma City. The game was actually just under 10, so we called second and 10. The ball's now on the Tulsa 31-yard line. Hilger looks to throw. He's got Malcolm Lewis out here who dances out of bounds had he got by the man who made tackle, and that was uh, Jesse Morrow, the man who just came in. Albert Myers, excuse me, is the man who made the stop, and uh, had he got by him, it would have been six points. Oklahoma State feels very comfortable just getting the ball with their split, and you can see there's only one man out there, and Lewis uh, couldn't shake him this time. as a great tackle there by Myers. Albert Myers. Good job. Ten tackles last year against Oklahoma State, so he also plays a Cowboys stop. That was a gain of nine, so it's a third and one now. The ball is on the Tulsa 22-yard line. Five minutes and 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. Oklahoma State leads at 7 nothing. You look from the end zone camera, Kelly Cook and Sean Jones at the setback for Oklahoma State. Hills is going to throw on third and one. Nice catch out there. Bobby Riley is the man who made the catch. And, and it's inside the, the 20, so it should be the first down. Bobby Riley, uh, Rusty Hilger hasn't given Bobby Riley an easy pass to catch all year. He's had to make the circus grabs, and this one's going to go down with the best of them. Look at this. As uh, he had to really stretch himself out, there was nothing that Steve Hill could do on that play. It was a perfectly thrown ball. Rusty Hilger completing 53% of his passes, and that is tops among career passers at Oklahoma State. Pat Jones talking with one of the assistant coaches on sideline. So the Cowboys have the first and 10, and the ball now is inside the 20-yard line of the Tulsa 18. Cowboys lead it 7-0. The give is to Sean Jones. He may score. He will score. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. So the holding penalty on the flea flicker doesn't hurt as the Cowboys come back to score to take a 13-0 lead. Chuck Shanklin is going to throw a key block, but Sean Jones did most of this on his own because uh, the hole really wasn't there. 76 is Shanklin. You'll see him make his initial block. Jones was, the play was supposed to go the right there. Shanklin ties up the man just long enough. Jones breaks a tackle and cuts back right there, and it was over. Sean Jones, we said he couldn't bust the big play. He just busted one. Jones outruns Tony Buford and Xavier Warren into the end 
zone. Larry Rhodes on to try the point after. A little bit left, but still good. And the Cowboys lead it 14-0. Four minutes and 55 seconds to go. And Oklahoma State is off to a great start, quite obviously. Great defensive battle, as we talked about all week and in the pregame. Uh, Tulsa has shown they can move the ball up and down the field. And Oklahoma State certainly has uh, two, three possessions, two touchdowns off of it. Here's the play again from the end zone. Sean Jones, the play was meant to go right. He sees there's nothing there, cuts back left. You see everyone sealed off, 41, cannot make the play. And that's uh, Buford, and then Jones just breaks the tackle right there and goes into the end zone, almost lost his balance, but showing great balance uh, to get into the end zone. Cowboys lead at 14-0, still 4.55 to go in the first quarter. So the Cowboys get a break on the fumble. They hurt themselves a little bit. The penalty is the ball went back to the 41, but they managed to march 41 yards into the end zone, and Oklahoma State leads it 14-0. Four plays, 41 yards, and they actually scored twice in that. Uh, but again, the penalty wiped one of them out. Sean Jones going the final yard. Jones now has about five or six carries. Six carries, I believe, and he's up around 50 yards already. We're still in the first quarter. Larry Roach will kick off for Oklahoma State. Matter of fact, on Jones, six carries, 50 yards each. Horton and Chris Vaughn will be deep at the University of Tulsa goal line. Roach's kickoff goes just across the goal line. Vaughn returned it last time, and this time he's better get out of there because he's already stepped across. Out of the 10-yard line, he made the mistake. His teammate, Horton, told him to stay in, but he had already stepped across the line. He had to go. That almost happened last week for the Cowboys against San Diego State. The man actually stepped on the line but didn't break the plane, so I guess they left it in. Here's the replay. You'll see Horton now as he gets the ball. His teammate says, stay in. Oh, he steps out. So he's got to come up. And uh, he did a good job of getting down. I think the Cowboys kind of stopped a little bit when they saw him start to kneel down, or they would have had him back at the five. Ball's out to the 11-yard line. Steve Gage and his teammates go to work there, first and 10 at the 11. Four, four minutes, 52 yeah. seconds to go. Not much right up the middle, maybe a couple. As the Oklahoma State defensive line closes in. Nothing fancy there. Matt Monger expecting that one came up. He's a walk-on, of course, made all-league last year. and. He came in to stuff that play as it came right up the middle. Rodney Young is the ball carrier. The gain is three. Now they make it back to a gain of two, and it is second and eight out at the 13-yard line. Gates may be changing the play at the line of scrimmage right here after looking over the Oklahoma State defense. Tries to opt and the pick goes back to Brown. Brown gets a pretty nice move across the 15-yard line to about the 16, but it's still going to bring up about a third and five. Brown made a great play. This was a bad pitch out. John Washington gets in. It's the reverse pivot on the option off the veer. Washington almost forcing a bad pitch. Brown doing a great job catching the football because he was almost hit immediately there as he picked up a few yards. Third and six. The ball is out at the 15-yard line for Tulsa. They have to get to the 21 to get the first down here in the first quarter. Three minutes, 46 seconds to go. Cowboys showing the blitz. They probably won't. It is a passing down. Steve Gage looks right now. He throws over the middle. The pass is complete out there to Eric Borders, who's made a couple of catches tonight, and that's a false of first down. Coming in, no catches. He already has two catches. It looked like Gage wanted to go to Ronnie Kelly as flank, who has eight catches over 200 yards of offense. Look, you'll see here, he's looking for Kelly all the way. Kelly had double coverage, is well covered, so he goes to his second receiver. Eric Borders on the same pattern that he caught earlier, just as Lant across the middle on the post pattern. It's good for a first down. Gage did a good job of reading the defense that time, and his line did a good job of holding the Cowboys back so he could get the time to do that. First and ten, fakes it into the line. Gage keeps it. He will get nothing. He'll lose a couple. A couple of Cowboys were there. Monger was one of them, and Mike Hudson is in the ball game. He helped to make the stop, too. Mike Hudson is very good at coming up uh, from his uh, drop end or safety position and forcing the play. Right here, watch Jim Krebs, number 55, come in after the first play. James Ham took the dive, man. Krebs has the quarterback. Hudson's got the pitch man or the quarterback, so they had the veer well defensed that time. Hudson was the first man to meet him as you look at John Cooper and Matt Monger helped to finish him off. Second and 11, the ball at the Tulsa 31-yard line. Gage again looks at the option. Now he wants to throw, and it's incomplete. It was intended for Greg Petty, who's come in the ball game, and Petty actually didn't turn around quick enough. But a little faster than they thought, and there's a penalty flag on the play. Raymond Pope might have had a reception uh, on the interception if he would have turned around. Uh, looked like it almost hit him in the back. It's going to be oh, against it? Tulsa, it looks like. Uh, James Ham pointing that way. Pass interference being called against Tulsa. I believe that uh, has a loss of down with it. Not quite sure on that. Gage, by the way, is four for five. Well, four for six now after the completion of 55 yards. So 
Both quarterbacks are completing a high percentage of passes here in the early going. Take a look at John Cooper, and he simply wants to know what is the call, and we will have to wait and see what the official says here. I but don't believe it was on the intended receiver. It didn't look like Petty had his hand on Pogue, but it's a big one, 15 yards. And we'll see if it's a loss of down or not. It's a pass, pass interference against the University of Tulsa. An eligible receiver downfield loses the uh, down. We'll check here. The official puts his hands behind his head. That means loss of down. Offensive pass interference against Tulsa. It is loss of down. So that will bring up a third down and a long way to go. It'll bring up a third and 26 from the Tulsa 16-yard line. So they've had a couple of big plays, but they've only got five yards from where they started this drive from the 11. So penalties have hurt both teams a little bit, but the Cowboys have been able to overcome those. They lead it 14-0. There's a nice hole up the middle and out across the 30-yard line. A nice run. Nice play called that time by the Tulsa coaching staff upstairs. And the man who carried the football, Bobby Booker, is the man who carried it for Tulsa. But on defense, the defense playing real loose that time. Third and 26. Uh, they were pinning their ears back and going after the pass rush. So a little draw, a little delay pattern is going to work for you, but it won't get you 26 yards. Fourth and 11, and Tulsa will have to punt it away. Richie Stevenson comes on again for his second play of the game. He will punt it away from about his own 15-yard line. Riley again is back to take the punt for Oklahoma State. Cowboys showing the all-out rush. Now they drop back a little bit. Nice high kick comes down at about the 33. Riley takes it there, and that's where the Cowboys will go to work. A lot of moving on that uh, punt on both sides of the ball. I thought there was a little offensive uh, motion there. There's definitely some defensive jump. Immediately following tonight's game, stay tuned for Newsline 9 Weekend Edition. Mike Carpenter, Jennifer Eve, and Paul Boucherot. And immediately following that, college football scoreboard with Tony Sellers. The Cowboys take over again in good field position at the 33. I believe they start a couple of their drives inside Tulsa territory. 37-yard punt, so Stevenson uh, not having the greatest night so far. He is kicking into a win that you wouldn't call stiff, but you would call it brisk. Rusty Hilger's got Sean Jones, Thurman Thomas. Jones is out of the game. Thomas can't find much running room around the left side, and the game perhaps was two across the 35-yard line, maybe out to about the 35, and it'll be about second and eight for Oklahoma State. Thurman Thomas having a, a fairly good freshman year so far, coming into the game 38 carries, 148 yards, averaging 49 a game. Again, though, Sean Jones is the big ball carrier. Of course, Charles Crawford, before he was injured, also getting quite a bit of playing time. Thomas being put in a situation where really he has to produce because you need two people at that tailback spot, and he's getting a lot of playing time. Crawford may play next week against Nebraska. He may still be two weeks away after the knee injury. Hildred gives to Kelly Cook his first carry of the game. He goes across the 40, out to the 43-yard line. He will be just short of a first down. Sometimes I wonder who that surprises more, the defense or Kelly Cook. <laughs> against Bowling Green, the fullback did not carry the ball a single time. Uh, then against San Diego State, Cook carried it five times in the first half. So, uh, again, uh, the offense changing things up. Brings up a third down and one, though. And we're going to have some uh, defensive change. Coming to the game, number 97, uh, Byron Jones back to the game. They're going with their goal line stance on third and one. Cowboys go with a couple of tight ends in the game on the very short yardage situation. Third and one. Cook and Thomas the setback behind Hilger. They give us Thomas hit behind the line. I think he got it though on forward progress right at about the 45. He took a lick too because number 97 I believe is either 97 or 47 both of which hit very, very hard. One Mr. X, one 280-pound Jones. We'll see it here. Thomas takes about three steps after taking the football. It's number 97, 280-pound Byron Jones. Thomas weighs 185 pounds, soaking wet, and he was able to bounce off. Did a good job of bouncing off and getting a yard. That's all he needed. So Oklahoma State has it first and 10 at the OSU 45. Just under a minute to play in the first quarter. It's homecoming here at Skelly Stadium. And John Cooper, the Tulsa coach, has called this the biggest game he has ever coached in the stadium. Hilger looks to throw. The swing pass comes out to Thomas on the right side, looks for blocking across the 50, down to the Tulsa 45. The gain is almost 10. You can see that play coming from up here. Obviously, the defense can't see as well as we can from up here on top of the press box, but Thomas just simply flares out. A couple of linemen will come out in front. They come back like they're going to pass block uh, on a deep one, and they just dump it out to Thomas. Now, Thomas will pick up a key block coming up right here from Ralph Partita. Partita gets his helmet in front of the man and allows Thomas to pick up an extra six, seven yards. 
into Tulsa territory once again are the Cowboys at the 45 with 28 seconds to go in the first quarter. Not quite the first down. This will be the last play of the first quarter. It's second and one. The straight head, that'll be a first down for Oklahoma State as Thomas gets in the uh, stop to set the chain. So we may get another playoff here in the first quarter. 21 seconds to go. So the Cowboys moving the ball right down the field. You can't help but think about the last guy to wear 34, Ernest Anderson. Both of Ernest Anderson and Thurman Thomas about the same size, and they both run with reckless abandon. Neither one's afraid to go up the middle and take some vicious shots, and they both do a good job of bouncing off folks. Thomas does have a way to go before he can match Ernest. Thomas indicated that one of the reasons he came to Oklahoma State was because he would have liked, would like to follow in Ernest Anderson's footsteps. He may be a couple of years away, but he's off to a good start as a freshman. And unless Rusty gets it off, that will be, and it is, that was the final play of the first quarter. A good first quarter for the Cowboys. It's Kelly Stadium. Our score is Oklahoma State 14, the University of Tulsa nothing. We'll be back with the second quarter in a moment. in the second quarter here at Skelly Stadium. Oklahoma State leading 14-0. Rusty Hilter is the quarterback. The Cowboys with the football first and 10 at the Tulsa 43-yard line and penalty flags all over the place. Mary Hanna jumped a little early. It'll be procedure against the Cowboys their third penalty. Some unofficial first quarter statistics. Tulsa ran 15 plays. Oklahoma State so both offenses had equal opportunity to do something. The Cowboys putting it into the end zone twice. On the ground, Sean Jones, six carries, 50 yards and one touchdown. That an 18-yard run. You see uh, Pat Jones very unhappy with the penalty situation at the moment. Rusty Hilger in the first quarter, five of six for 64 yards. Thurman Thomas, one for one, nine yards and a touchdown. Leading rusher for Tulsa, Gordon Brown, three carries for 20 yards. You saw the sweatshirt that Pat Jones had on. It says Oklahoma Aggies. There is a story behind that. We'll get to it in just a moment. People probably wondering about it. Rusty Hilger gives to Thurman Thomas. He dances a little bit up to about the 45-yard line. The ball's on the 46, so the gain is only one. It's very simple why Pat Jones is wearing Oklahoma Aggies. Mr. Iba told him to. So it's also 40s week, is it not? It's still water on the campus. Kind of 40s week in the Bob Finnamore, the great uh, all-around player. What can you say? Nine interceptions in 1945, one of the best passers, best runners ever. He visited the team on Thursday, gave him kind of a pep talk, so Mr. Iba said, wear the Oklahoma Aggies sweatshirt, and Pat Jones more than happy to do whatever Mr. Iba says. 14, 28 to go, first half. The pass over the middle goes to Barry Hanna, the Oklahoma State tight end. He will be right around the 40-yard line, but still short of a first down by about eight or nine yards. As a player, I'm sure you like that. Barry Hanna jumping offside uh, to get it loose five, and immediately Rusty comes right back to it, says it's okay. I think Hanna was the primary receiver. He just comes right across the middle, stops, turns around, says, here I am, here's 8-2. Hilger drills him. Hilger now six of seven passes. He's having an excellent ball game. Most of you know by now the story on Rusty Hilger, the last scholarship that Oklahoma State gave out the year Rusty Hilger was a senior at Southeast High School. Rusty's come on, and he'll be among the top three passers in Oklahoma State history by the time this year is over. Another penalty flag down. This one across the line of scrimmage. Now the pass comes out to Thomas incomplete. We'll have to see what the penalty flag was. It was about four or five yards downfield from the line of scrimmage. There's also a flag across the uh, field at the line of scrimmage. So it's probably a procedure or something along those lines. Illegal procedure against the Cowboys. That is four penalties now in the first, really, quarter because we're only a, a minute 18 into the second quarter. And Pat Jones, again, was very frustrated last very week. Upset. Ten penalties. He's very upset right now, despite leading 14 to nothing. And, and obviously, the Cowboys are moving the ball. Tulsa really hasn't stopped them that much, but they have stopped themselves. They managed to overcome it. They've got 14 points on the board right now. They are in command of the game, but... Uh, Pat Jones is not a happy man with 13 minutes and 42 seconds to go. I think he's going to kick it away. Larry Roach will be kicking about a 56-yarder. Oh, Larry Roach is out on the field. He is going to try a 54-yard field goal into the wind here at Scally Stadium. From the left hash mark for Larry Roach, the kick is up. It's got a lot. Will the wind let it get there? And it's going to fall just short in front of the goalpost, so it is no good. Larry Roach thought it was good. He had his hands over his head. His first attempt this season at over 50 yards. I believe his career longest is only 56 or 58 against Kansas, so he does have the leg. But the wind is just brisk enough tonight. The air is a little cold, a little heavy, and uh, couldn't quite get there. Immediately following Newsline 9, stay tuned for all the scores and the highlights from around the country with TV9 College Football Scoreboard. Tony Sellers, your host tonight. That's the College Football Scoreboard right after the news, which follows the football game. 15 minutes and 42 seconds to go. Tulsa now has the football. Gage, the quarterback, tries to make the move to the left side. The pitch comes back to Booker. He gets right out to 
to the 40-yard line, so the game maybe is uh, two yards from the 38 to the 40. Again, the reverse pivot option. Uh, John Cooper, the Tulsa coach, looking on. A good, again, well defensed by the Cowboys. They were blocked on the play, but again, uh, a couple of players got up off the ground, able to, with their speed, get back and recover. We've seen some shots of Pat Jones on the sideline. You can see he's very animated out there. Second down at seven. He gets three on the carry. Gage brings his team to the line of scrimmage. His team is trailing 14-0. Homecoming here at Scully Stadium. This time Gage wants to throw. He does across the middle. Ronnie Kelly is the man who made the catch inside Oklahoma State territory at the 47. Kelly this year has a very long touchdown catch to his credit. That came in the first game of the season against Southern Illinois. I believe that was a 65 or 70 yard. It was a 78 yard against Southern Illinois. He also caught a 41 yard against Brigham Young and a 50-yarder last week against Arkansas. Eight catches, 208 yards coming in. That time, Mike Huss in the corner came up to take what looked like the veer coming at him, and uh, Kelly just stepped into the vacant zone behind him. Gage pitches back. Now with the football is Booker. He gets to plus the 45. The game really isn't that much on the first down play. Mike Hudson again doing a nice job. Coming off the block, we'll see it here as the reverse pit option again comes out to number 20. That's Booker, and watch Mike Hudson, if you can see on the front of this, coming off the block of number 46, Ronnie Young, and making the tackle. If not, the Booker might have had another six yards. Booker tonight, three carries, 21 yards. Second and six for Tulsa. The OSU 43-yard line. Gage gets straight ahead and not much there. Right at the line of scrimmage, the ball carrier stops and there's a fumble, and Oklahoma State has it, and Harry Roberts is the guy who came up with it. You can see Gage, as soon as he made the uh, pass, look straight down at the, at the turf, and the you know he does that. so quickly. And, uh, oh, Hampton nice. is the man who got it. I thought Roberts had the football, but Hampton is the man who comes up with the ball, and again, Oklahoma State has done a great defensive job. Tavi Hampton is in for the injured Rodney Harding. Let's see it right here. Here comes the pass. It's not a good exchange. Uh, the running back, number 46, Rodney Young, never had it. Never really had it. Number and 96 is Hampton. Watch him dive in there. Right there at the end, right on the left side of your screen. He dove in there and got it. Hampton is showing the great depth on the defensive line that Oklahoma State hasn't had in the last few years. Playing tonight in place of the injured Rodney Harding, the outstanding senior out of Oklahoma City. Hampton's in his place tonight. The Cowboys have the ball. First and 10 at their own 43. Hibbs is going for six right now. He's got a receiver out there. Jamie Harris in the pass is incomplete. Jamie Harris out there uh, against number 48, uh, Albert Myers. Myers is six foot. Uh, Jamie Harris is listed, uh, listed, mind you, at uh, five foot ten. But I'm uh, five foot ten and a half, and I look down at him every week. <laughs> uh, but Jamie has the great ability to leap, so he is always in the pass pattern, regardless of the size of the man on him. He also has great speed. The Cowboys go for the downs on the first down plays, so and now they face the second ten. The balls on the Oklahoma State 43. Rusty Soldier brings the team to the line with the Cowboys leading 14 0, 11 55. There's again to Sean Jones. Looks for running room. There's not much there. The gain is about five, though. He does a good job of dancing inside and over 45, and it'll be a third and five situation for OSU. Actually, almost third and six. Tulsa's defense, a lot like the Cowboys' defense, they pursue very well, use their speed. They're not the biggest. Uh, football team on the defensive line. They do have a couple of guys at 280, but they're very quick. You'll see they follow Sean Jones down the line. Jones doing a nice job cutting back up. I think Tulsa will uh, hold him to four yards on a second down play. Satisfied with that. Third and five for Oklahoma State. The Cowboys at their own 48-yard line. Hilger's pass is complete to Malcolm Lewis, and it'll be another first down for Oklahoma State. Nice pattern. Lewis made the nice cut right across the middle. Nice Pass by Hildred. Lewis, 6'3, 210 pounds in the daylight, as the coaches say, and uh, ad lib out there a little bit because that's what you do from that tailback spot. You look for the opening, and if it's not there, you try to create something. So it's third and 15 for Oklahoma State. The ball is just inside the 30 yard line. Passing down for Hildred. He's got the safety valve over here across the middle. He's got his tight end, Barry Hanna, who goes inside the 15 yard line. It will be an Oklahoma State first down. Don't you love the way tight ends carry the football after they catch it? They don't try any moves. Watch this with Rusty Hilger, who's now 8 of 11 for close to 100 yards now in the first half. Watch Barry Hanna as he catches wide open. Love the way these tight ends run. Hey, number 41. Hey, right there. I'm not going to try to juke you. I'm going to run right over you. Hannah at 6'2", 232 pounds, carries a load. Well, Barry is not the receiver that John Chesley was who, who 
kept that position going very well for Oklahoma State the last three years, but Tulsa cannot afford to ignore him, and they've done that a couple of times tonight. They had double coverage on Jamie Harris out there, and they had a guy covering Thurman Thomas who came out of the backfield. Hannah was all alone over the middle. Six minutes and 40 seconds to go now in the first half. Cowboys first and 10 inside the 15-yard line. There's the gift to Thomas. Cuts you, makes a nice cut. May fight his way into the end zone, not quite. Down at about the two or three-yard line. Nice effort by Thomas. Thurman Thomas is going to score his first touchdown as a Cowboy one of these days. This is about the third time this season that he has gotten down to the one-yard line and just not able to keep his balance. Here it goes off the right side behind Partita and Blair. Good block by Kelly Cook right there, clearing out the secondary people. And then it's all Thurman Thomas. He makes a nice run. Nate Harris uh, saves the touchdown on that play, but the Cowboys have it first and goal at the two. Cowboys will have four chances to get it in from the two-yard line and up their lead to 21 nothing. Right now it's 14 nothing. Clock moves with six minutes and nine seconds to go before nearly a sellout crowd at Skelly Stadium. It's homecoming. Rusty's got to get it off. Two seconds. He does finally. Thomas leaps at the goal line. Is it in? He is. His touchdown first touchdown. Oklahoma State. First is a Cowboy. And you saw some of the Oklahoma State fans. You can hear them as well. Uh, they are in both end zones, and I tell you what, there are more Oklahoma State people. The whole stadium is, is waving, it looks like. Here goes Thurman Thomas over the top, and he scores his first collegiate touchdown, and I think there are more there, Oklahoma there State fans here. Tulsa officials told us that they thought they would have around 21,000 people, Tulsa fans in the stadium. They thought Oklahoma State would have 19 or 20,000, so it's almost evenly divided. Five minutes, 59 seconds to go in the first half. Cowboys lead at 21 nothing. We're back in a moment. To Larry Roach has been a busy man tonight. This will be the third time he has kicked off after a touchdown. His team leads it 21 nothing. Cowboys have the lead with just under six minutes to go in the first half. That scoring drive after the fumble, six plays, 24 yards. Thurman Thomas, the touchdown. He also has thrown one tonight. Horton takes the football for Tulsa on the kickoff. He goes across the 15, right around to the 19-20. Mark Moore again. To 19. Mark Moore is a great special teams player for Oklahoma State, and once again, he's in on the stop. Three kickoffs, three tackles by Mark Moore. Uh, Thurman Thomas is uh, giving uh, Oklahoma Steve Sewell a run for the Offensive Player of the Week honors. Uh, Thomas has run for a touchdown pass to uh, Steve Sewell, as you'll hear at halftime, had a great game for the Oklahoma Sooners as well today. Rushed for over 100 and passed, or actually received for over 100. Ball is on the 19-yard line. Tulsa has the football. This is Booker across the 20, out of bounds at about the 24. We're going to look at the touchdown one more time. Thurman Thomas, his first touchdown as a Cowboy, the freshman out of Texas. It's the power eye formation. Two fullbacks in the game, Will Timmons and Kelly Cook. They just bury their heads in, and Thomas showing great leaping ability just goes right over the top. Gage brings his team out. That was a six-yard run by Booker, so it's second and four. And the ball is out right at the 25-yard line for Tulsa. It's second and six, not four. They got the end around. This is Kelly with the football. But the Cowboys, with that great defensive speed, were not fooled at all, and it's a loss. I believe it's number 33, David Webb, who stayed at home. Actually, there were about five Cowboys who stayed at home. We're looking at John Washington. He was in on the tackle. We're going to see it again. The reverse to the flanker. Uh, Ronnie Kelly, he has great speed. A deep handoff, but you're going to see a host of Cowboys standing at home. There's Leslie O'Neill. Uh, I believe it, yeah, it was Webb. There's Washington over, but it was David Webb staying at home at his defensive end position that made that one happen. Oklahoma State will be one of the smaller defensive units among major colleges in the country, but one of the quickest, one of the fastest, and that's really the strength of that Cowboy defense. Gage is looking to throw. Across the middle, he's got his tight end. Across the 30, and that's all the further he gets is the 30-yard line as the Cowboys are right there. Yeah, but he puts his shoulder down. No fancy moves from Andrews either. Kevin Andrews tips it at 220. So we got a couple of big tight ends in the game. And uh, we're going to see it again. Gage going straight back. His first drop back of the night. Good pressure by Leslie O'Neill and James Ham. The tight end just coming right across the middle and just buries his head down. And who did he hit there? I believe it was uh, Adam Hines, perhaps. And we have a flag on the play, and it is uh, in the Tulsa backfield. But Tulsa is not walking backwards. They're talking to Kaspersky, who is the team captain on offense for Tulsa. He says he wants a penalty against Oklahoma State. Gage tonight, 6 of 8 for 77 yards. So Steve Gage is not having all that bad a ball game despite being behind 21 to nothing. It the will penalty be is against the Cowboys. Exactly what it is. We'll wait for the official's ruling. Roughing the passer. We said Washington and Ham putting good pressure on. The pressure was a little too much. And uh, 
It was against Gage, and I believe that is Gage on the sideline. Gage is on the sideline, so Richie Stevenson, the youngster out of Moore, Oklahoma, is the man who's in there, quarterback now for Tulsa, straight ahead. He gives to Horton, I believe, carrying the ball. It is Horton, and uh, Horton can't find much running room either right at the line of scrimmage. Nothing fancy about that. The quarterback comes in. He's a little cold, not expecting to come in off the injury. Just hand it off on the dive play, straight uh, first option of the uh, uh, Veer offense. They're looking at Gage's mouth. It looked like on that roughing, he took a shot to the mouth, maybe trying to stop a little bleeding. He is uh, walking on the back of the sideline at the moment. Stevenson is now the quarterback, the youngster out of Moore is also the punter for the Tulsa team. Four minutes and 25 seconds to go in the first half. Little mix up, and Stevenson has to run with it. And uh, again, new quarterback in there. Maybe the runners and the quarterback not sure exactly which direction they were heading, and it's going to be a third down play. Stevenson, the sophomore out of Moore, uh, doing a great job here, showing some good athletic ability. Knows it's not there. Don't want to try to fumble the football in that situation. Just turn it up, get your four or five yards, and face a third and five. Just under four minutes to go now. Big play for Tulsa if they want to get something on the board. Third and four from the Tulsa 42 and a half yard line. Stevenson gives straight ahead. Booker is the man who carries the ball, and he's not going to have the first down, I don't believe, but there is a flag on the play. I believe Oklahoma State is offside. John Washington's face mask looked like to me it was touching the center's face mask. That was Stan Fields offsides, and it will be on John Washington. They must have been talking about where to go to and dinner because he was whispering in his ear. And the bad part about that is, from the OSU point of view, is that gives Tulsa the first down, and the play did not get the first down. They would have had to punt the ball away. Cowboys could have run out the clock and gone into the locker room 21 nothing. They may still do that, but that's a pretty big penalty right there, and the Cowboys have hurt themselves again. Booker has five carries for 34 yards. It will indeed be a first down, and that's what, five penalties now against Oklahoma State. So despite leading 21 to nothing, Pat Jones is going to have some serious things to talk about at halftime. Got to set the chains on the far side of the field. Tulsa has the football at its own 48-yard line, first and 10. Stevenson in there, quarterback. This is Gordon Brown across the 50. The gain is about five to the Oklahoma State 47-yard line. Just power football there, a little extracurricular activity at the end of the play as uh, number 78 for Tulsa, the right guard, I believe, uh, is giving uh, Warren Thompson, the defensive end, a little bit of extra shoving there. They're still working on Gage on the sidelines. Uh, quite concerned, three trainers around him and the team doctor still checking around his chin. Cowboys have dominated the game, no question about that, but if Tulsa can get seven points right here before the half, it might change things a little bit in the second half. Stevenson gives to Brown again. Nothing really all that fancy. He's close to a first down. The game is about three. He needed to get to the 42-yard line. He's going to be about a yard short. David Alexander's number 78 for Tulsa against number 91, Warren Thompson. You couldn't see it on the screen as uh, Tulsa is very near the first down, but they've got a little private battle going on. That play went right up the middle, and Alexander drove Thompson to the sideline. So a uh, few verbal exchange, a couple of pushing on the play before, and on that play, uh, Alexander just drove him right off the field. Now they come on to measure now, and we'll see how close Tulsa is. Very close. If they don't have it, it'll be very close within inches. We'll see as they spot it right there. It's about a foot and a half short, if that. Sunday, beginning at 11.30 tomorrow morning, it's NFL Today, followed by Dallas at Chicago and Philadelphia at Washington. Another exciting Sunday of NFL football right here on TV9, a doubleheader. Brown now six carries for 34 yards. He's the leading rusher for Tulsa. Sean Jones, the leading rusher for the Cowboys with over 68 yards. Two minutes, 52 seconds to go now in the first half. Cowboys lead at 21-0, third and one for Tulsa at the Oklahoma State 48-yard line. Stevenson, the quarterback, sneaks for the first down, so... Tulsa will still have a chance to uh, get some points on the board here before the first half ends. I believe he got it. Uh, the Cowboys saying he didn't because they pushed him back, but it looked like he shot his helmet off far enough to get the first down. From our I angle, it looks like he's got it. don't even believe they will measure. They might, but uh, they've got it. First down, so Tulsa first and 10, and the ball's at the Oklahoma State 42-yard line. John Cooper's in there somewhere sitting in the play. Cooper realizes his team really is in a hole right now, trailing 21-0 against a defense as good as Oklahoma State. He really needs some points right here. Two minutes and 32 seconds to go. Stevenson remains in the game at quarterback. Brown and Young are the setbacks behind him. Blitz. Blitz comes. And number 90, Matt Monger is the man who knocked him down. You can see that coming all the way. And Tulsa had the wrong play called. Ronnie Kelly was the only man out, and he was running a sideline deep pattern. Watch Matt Monger shoot the gap. Nobody touched him. 
and if uh, Matt wouldn't have got him, Rod Brown, the strong safety, was also shooting. They were right on the line of scrimmage. Tulsa needed to audibleize there, but Stevenson, again, fresh in the game. Uh, didn't a little bit inexperienced. Obviously, the Cowboys showing blitz. Stevenson didn't pick it up, and uh, the Cowboys had a great defensive play again, and it's second and 16. Now we got some movement along the line of scrimmage, and uh, perhaps one of the Tulsa players moved. It was a Tulsa, it was number two up on the top, Eric Borders. Uh, again, the Cowboys were showing the blitz. The Cowboy defender stepped across the line of scrimmage. The receiver was watching the defensive player, not the quarterback. And uh, you'll see here on the replay, I'm not sure what this is. Oh, the quarterback also stepped back, but up on the top of the, you couldn't see it on the screen. Borders was already five yards down the field because he watched the defensive player step across the line. You Look see that Gage as they still continue to attend to Steve Gage. Right, he may two, have been four, cut. He may eight. also have been hit on the head and uh, may have had a combination of being uh, knocked a little bit silly and also being cut. We'll try to have a word from the, the sideline on his condition. Stevenson is the quarterback right now looking for the screen pass. Across the middle he's got Gordon, but he's a long way from the first down. In fact, Tulsa's going to be back on Tulsa's side of the 50. That one didn't fool anybody. Krebs and Monger down there. And uh, Leslie O'Neill, who broke up a great uh, screen pass in the Arizona State game. Watch uh, Leslie O'Neill there, triple team, still gets a hand up there, but it's Krebs and Monger. Nice catch, but uh, it doesn't go for very much. As a matter of fact, it lost. It actually lost. It's third and 20 now. The ball is on the Tulsa 48 yard line, and uh, the Cowboys can still take over the football here as we have exactly one minute to go in the first half. Third and 20. Stevenson gets uh, maybe a yard, and that's it. So Tulsa's going to have to punt it away with 52 seconds to go. Maybe we'll see an Oklahoma State timeout. Perhaps not. Tulsa will. Steve Gage has put an ice pack under his chin, and he will not definitely, now that the uh, Hurricane are going to give up the football, come back in. Uh, but you see Stevenson just trying to get somewhere, and John Washington just crushed him, or actually Warren Thompson. The Cowboys have not called a timeout, and Tulsa's just going to let the clock tick down, probably take a delay a game penalty because from that position on the field they'll kick it into the end zone anyway so let the clock get down to about 18 seconds take the penalty and don't give Oklahoma State much time that's what will happen they will throw the flag right here they actually won't throw it they will just say that that's it you've had delay of game now the punting unit comes on and clock is stopped with 16 seconds to go so the Cowboys will go into the locker room at halftime leading 21 nothing Tulsa will have to give up the ball right here Stevenson of course uh, the man has been playing quarterback in the last series of downs is also the punter for Tulsa Nobody Cowboys back. have no one back. They're going to give this one up and uh, run one play and go in feeling pretty good, I would think, except for the penalties in the first half. Stevenson will kick it away from his own 30-yard line. No return since there is no one to return it. And the ball goes into the end zone, and the Cowboys will have probably one play from the 20-yard line. Eight seconds to go in the first half, and we'll return to Skelly Stadium in just a moment. And this time, Sean Jones over the left side. He cuts back 18 yards for the score. 14 to nothing, Oklahoma State in the second quarter. And once again, it will be the turnover, setting up still a third Oklahoma State touchdown. Matt Monger jumping on the loose ball in Tulsa territory. A nice drive this time by the Cowboys, culminated by Thurman Thomas's first touchdown. Adds an Oklahoma State Cowboy up and over the top. Two yards for the score, and that's the way it stands at halftime. Oklahoma State, 21 to nothing. Well, it's been an interesting day. It's also for more halftime activities. Thank you very much, Tony. With me is Dr. Emery Turner, who is the Vice President for Administration and Student Services here at the University of Tulsa. Formerly the Athletic Director, John Cooper now holds that title, but the Athletic Program still reports to Dr. Turner. And uh, things right now not going your way at halftime, sir. John, not at all. The Cowboys are a great team. We knew that when they were coming in. Frankly, they're better than any of us, I, I think, thought they were. We played to Brigham Young and Arkansas the last two weeks and uh, lost both those games, but we really felt we were in those games and we're playing evenly with the teams even though we lost. In this case, we look like right now we're uh, not on equal terms for the Cowboys. Dr. Turner, I asked Myron Roderick about this and I'll ask you about financing in college sports. If your team is not a member of the College Football Association. There's supposedly this new freedom in television. And what do you see down the road? How is this new so-called freedom in television going to help you or hurt you? On balance, John, I think it hurts us, although we're here in a great city and a great part of the uh, country in a good state. And so we'll take advantage of what we have here in Tulsa and try to televise as many games here in Tulsa as we can. 
but as a practical matter, our appeal doesn't go much beyond uh, this area. We're delighted to uh, be able to be over in Oklahoma City in western Oklahoma. Wish we could put on a better show for the uh, fans over there, but we've got a second half and maybe we can do a little better. But on balance, I'd have to say that uh, we preferred the NCAA plan. I think w the way we are right now with uh, college uh, football across the country, there'll be too many games and we'll just compete against each other. And Maybe a few of the bigger teams like OU or Georgia, the ones who filed the suit, might come out ahead. I doubt that, but certainly the rest of us will not. Thank you very much, sir, and best of luck to you. The rest of the season's got a great athletic program here at the University of Tulsa. A lot of balance. We're going to have a message now from Oklahoma State University. Now in its centennial decade, Oklahoma State University has a history that is a solid base for exploring the future. Today, 21,000 plus students their academic preparation, and the capability of implementing research findings, our resources OSU is developing to ensure a quality future for all of us. Oklahoma State University, stimulating today's minds and tomorrow's opportunities. At Skelly Stadium, we have less than two minutes to go before the kickoff here in Tulsa. I'm John Snyder along with Ed Murray. And Ed, as we take a look at the official statistics from halftime, the only one that counts is on the scoreboard. They're very close, though. Actually, Tulsa had the ball a few more seconds than OSU. Total yardage of Cowboys, 227. Tulsa, 145. But Tulsa got its share of plays. They couldn't take advantage of the opportunities Cowboys did with a big play. Well, Steve Gage has had a pretty good first half. Six of eight for uh, 77 yards. Stevenson, one for one for one yard. Uh, that's not too good. But Gage... Uh, should be out. I believe I saw him warming up uh, here as we begin the second half. 111 yards rushing for the Cowboys, 116 passing the football. So uh, you can't get a little bit more balance than that. Tulsa is having trouble running the football, though. 26 uh, rushes, only 67 yards. Uh, they've actually tried to run the ball two more times than the Cowboys have. You know what's interesting about the Oklahoma State defense is you take a look at Pat Jones with less than a minute now to go before kickoff here in the second half. Is it... The Cowboy defense, everyone knows they're very good. They were third in the nation in total defense coming into this game tonight. They've got so much speed that Tulsa simply cannot make that option game go in the corner. They've not been able to turn the corner more than once or twice tonight, and they are so quick that they get a lot of people there when they try to run up the middle. Basically, we're talking about a good defense. And it's, and it's not that they're not executing their veer option. They're blocking it very well, but the Cowboys are coming off that first block. Even when they're knocked down, they're getting back on their feet, and before the running back can get very far downfield, they're making the play on it. As you look at Pat Jones trying to run his record and that of his team to 4-0 here in the 1984 season. As you know, Nebraska was beaten today by Syracuse, and uh, the Cowboys will go to Lincoln next week, and uh, that won't be an easy chore. And Pat Jones wants to get the next 30 minutes out of the way and uh, start thinking about that coming up next week, next Saturday in Lincoln. A key to this game may be the fact that Oklahoma State's going to get the football first here to start the second half at Arizona State. The Cowboys took the second half kickoff, went 80 yards in three plays, and took a commanding 30 to nothing lead and Arizona State's fight just left them. So if the Cowboys could do something similar, John, and take a 28 to nothing lead, uh, it could be a long night for the Hurricane. But I tell you what, with Syracuse beating Nebraska today, I'm not ready to concede anything yet. That's true. And this is a very key defensive series, obviously, for Tulsa to start the second half. Starovsky will do the kicking off. We're looking at a replay, I believe this is the touchdown run by Sean Jones. It is an 18 yard run. Jones in the first half, eight carries, 76 yards. As long as 21 yards, this was 18 yards. He made a nice cut there for the touchdown, and that gave Oklahoma State, I believe, a 14-0 lead. The second half kickoff into the end zone, and the Cowboys will take it at the 20. Cowboys will start first and 10 at their own 20-yard line before a Skelly Stadium homecoming crowd of uh, almost 40,000 here tonight. As you heard John Thomas. Cooper say, this is the Thomas touchdown right here, the youngster out of Texas who played very well in the first half. And Thomas in the first half, 11 carries, 28 yards, but he also threw a pass, good for nine yards in the Cowboys' first touchdown. It was of nine yards to Jamie Harris. Rusty Hilger is the quarterback for Oklahoma State. Kelly Cook and Sean Jones, the running backs behind him. Jones, the tail back of the eye. The Cowboys go to work. First play of the third quarter from scrimmage. Jones, some tough yardage across the 20 out to about the 22-yard line. Some other first half uh, statistics. Rusty Hilger, 8 of 11 for 170 yards, no interceptions. Again, Thomas, 1 for 1, 9 yards, the touchdown. Uh, Malcolm Lewis, 3 catches, 33 yards. Uh, Barry Hanna, 2 catches for 23 yards. Sean Jones, 1 catch for 38 yards. Harris, 1 catch for 9 yards, and the touchdown. 
The Cowboys only had to punt one time. Cooper getting off a 43-yarder. Second and seven for Oklahoma State. The ball out at the OSU 23-yard line. Rusty Hilter calls the signals. Looking to throw on second down. That one could have been intercepted. It was intended out there for Terry Weimer, who ran a long route, and Rusty Hildre expected the square out to the sideline, and uh, one of the Tulsa players could have picked that off. It wasn't very well thrown. Just the opposite of what we saw Tulsa do in the first half when the receiver ran the short, the quarterback threw the long. It's more dangerous when the receiver runs the long and you throw it short because there's nothing but a cornerback out there and nothing but green real estate in front of him. Tim Gordon was the man who almost made the stop, or rather the interception for the University of Tulsa was thrown behind him, so it's third and seven. Again, the ball at the 23-yard line for the Cowboys as we're just underway here in the third quarter. Oklahoma State leading 14-0. And around, this is Jamie Harris. Nice defensive play by the Tulsa player. And we'll have to get his number. I believe it was Robert Estes, the man who made the stop. It is Estes, number 32. And uh, he had that one uh, foiled perfectly. Well, it was a well-set-up play. There was a blocker out in front. I believe it was 68 or 67 for the Cowboys. Let's see if we can get his number. He completely missed Estes. Estes ran right by him. You can see the... Uh, player right on the left side of your screen is just sitting down. I believe it was 67, uh, David Tucker, perhaps, who just missed the block. So the Cowboys will have to punt the football away. Kerry Cooper is the man who will do the punting for Oklahoma State. Gordon is the deep back right around his own 30-yard line for Tulsa. Gordon's got the football, makes a cut, and he'll gain maybe four yards as he brings it back, and uh, Tulsa will go to work first and 10 at the Tulsa 34. Number 92, Robert Nunn down there first, John. In the last couple of weeks, Nunn has really come on on the special teams as Cooper back up, back up. gets off a 55-yard punt to go with his four earlier in the game. But as I mentioned, Nunn has really come on as a special teams player. Stevenson, by the way, is starting the second half. Gage is still out. He was injured late in the first half. So Tulsa did the job defensively in taking over the football and stopping the Cowboys. Richie Stevenson still in there at quarterback, and a couple of Cowboys. Krebs is in there. I believe O'Neill is in there to make the stop. First half statistics for Tulsa offensively. I believe we're going to see a replay. There was nothing here on this uh, veer. The first option taken away, bottled up. Stevenson is bottled there, and Stanley Blair had the pitch man. Jim Krebs with a tackle. Offensively for Tulsa, Gage 6 for. 877 yards, Borders two rushes, uh, two receptions, 41 yards, Andrews two for 21 yards. Stevenson is in there quarterback. Remember, Steve Gage was shaken up in the first half and suffered a cut underneath his chin. We have not seen him back in the game. This is Gordon Brown with the football across the 40-yard line to about the 43. Nice run by Brown. He's going to be close to a first down. Brown in the first half had six carries for 34 yards. Uh, the best for Tulsa in the half. Booker, four carries, 30 yards. You'll see Brown here uh, fake to the left, they give it back on the right, a little counter play, good blocking out in front, that Stan Fields, the center, who blocks down on the corner, and uh, that frees Brown out for a good run. So it's first and 10 for Tulsa as the Golden Hurricane moves the ball out to the Tulsa 44-yard line. Stevenson's still in there, quarterback Young and Brown are the setbacks in the Veer offense, and uh, Kelly is the man in the slot to the right side. The pitch back goes to Brown, got some running room across the 50 inside Oklahoma State territory to the 47. Again, Tulsa is running their Veer very well. They're blocking it very well. The first uh, series of the game, they did this exact thing as they're doing the first series of the second half. It's interesting to me, too. They're running it to the short side of the field. We don't have quite as much room to operate, but they're doing a good job of it on the last couple of plays. Good kick block there from Stanley Blair. The uh, left corner for the Cowboys freed that one up. Second and two for Tulsa at the Oklahoma State 47-yard line. 12 minutes, 36 seconds to go in the third quarter. Cowboys lead it 21-0. Some of it, and it's good blocking by the Tulsa offensive line, and it's another first down. That's the veer for you, and it's it's good form. You you keep just popping it, popping it, and it's really a big play type offense. You just keep looking for that hole. Stevenson reads the first option, gives it to Young. It's not much of a hole there. He really creates it on his own. Just ran right by a few people. It's another first down to the Oklahoma State 34 yard line. First and ten for Tulsa. 12 minutes, 18 seconds to go in the third quarter. Young and Brown remain the setbacks. Richie Stevenson is the quarterback. There's the pitch back again. Brown. A little bit of running from this time. He does a good job of dragging a couple people inside the 30, and that's a gain of seven or eight yards. Again, John, they're running to the short side of the field. Stanley Blair almost up there to make a play. As you'll see, Young go right through. Nothing fancy here. Power sweep to the right. Uh, excuse me, it was on Brown. There you see Stanley Blair missed him. They're just a little seam there. Not really a hole. Just a little seam in the seven, eight-yard pickup. Kelly is the man who is uh, in the slot to the right side, and the running backs remain Brown and Young. There's a fumble on the snap.
Tulsa gets it, then the official throws a flag. Let's see if it's a procedure call against Tulsa. Browns so far tonight, nine carry, 60 yards, and it's against Oklahoma State. Offsides on the Cowboys. Second time that's happened. Seventh penalty against Oklahoma and State. And that'll be another yards. first down by way of penalty for Tulsa. As you remember, it kept the Tulsa drive alive in the first half. Didn't lead anything, but you see Pat Jones there is uh, upset the penalties. No question about it. They're, they've only gone for 40 yards, but there's been seven. Down and the Cowboys will be punting. Tons making a nice move there on Xavier Warren to pick up that extra yardage, but again, the Cowboys will be forced to kick it away. Kerry Cooper will come on to do the kicking for Oklahoma State. Gordon will go deep for Tulsa. Still plenty of time, 14 minutes, 38 seconds to go as we just start the fourth quarter here at Skelly Stadium, homecoming for the University of Tulsa. 10 minutes. No pressure on Cooper, so even though he dropped it, he gets it away, but it is not a good kick. It's a short one, goes out of bounds. Uh, depending on where the referee spots it at the 40-yard line, very short kick. That's maybe 19 yards. 15, 18, 19 yards is all. 18 yards on punt. So, Gary Cooper shanked that one to the left side, and uh, also takes over the ball in excellent field position. Actually, a break for the Cowboys. He fumbled the snap. They did have 10 players up on the line of scrimmage. You'll see Cooper just flat drops the football. Steenson in their quarterback. The give is to Brown. Looks for running room to the short side of the field. The gain is about five. As he goes out of bounds, at the, we'll give him a gain of four. As he goes out of bounds at the 44-yard line. 14 minutes and 13 seconds to go. Brown has about 60, 65 yards here in the second half. Really coming in most of in the third quarter since we just started the fourth quarter. I'm sure that John Cooper will look back at this game if he loses and say, I wish we had done things in the first half we did in the third quarter got ourselves back in it because Tulsa's played better than Oklahoma State, I think, for the most part here in the second half. 14 minutes and 13 seconds to go. Stevenson, the quarterback, they get straight ahead again to Brown. They've been able to get three and four and five yards on that play. Pat Jones is going to say just the opposite if he goes on the win. I wish we could have played the second half like we did the first half. Of course, this defense, Oklahoma State, has been out there a long time. Tulsa's been coming right at them. Some power football. They've got to be getting tired. Tulsa actually had the ball longer in the first half. And I garner to say they've had it longer here in the second half, too. 13 minutes, 48 seconds to go in the game. Stevenson has his team at the line. He needs about a yard and a half for a first down. It's a third down play. They give us to Gordon Brown. But Brown is tackled behind the line of scrimmage. An outstanding play by Oklahoma State Ham, who made a great play coming up from the defensive end position. Unusual call there, and that Dallas had been picking up three, four yards, is blasting straight ahead. They tried some misdirection here. Going wide, and the Cowboys' strength there, speed on defense out there to stop it in the person of James Ham. James Ham did a good job. The loss was one, so it's now four and four. two, and they've got to go for it now. The trail by two touchdowns. 13 minutes, 14 seconds to go now in the game. Looking for two yards to keep the drive alive. They go into the shotgun for the first time tonight. Punt, and they're going to punt. <laughs> Not the shotgun. No, it's a short. Came to kill it. Thank everybody. Great play. Take this all out. The pass coming to the short man. That's Ronnie Kelly. I'm not sure if he's normally the short man, but with Stevenson, that's a great dimension. Uh, when you've got the quarterback, it looked like, oh, they were just trying to draw us offside. Now he's going to punt it. Look at this. Cowboys still standing still. And Kelly gets it. Look at that hole. Good block there on Jim Krebs. I can't pick up the Tulsa man's numbers. We're back to action. So it's a first down play for Tulsa. And the nice play of the fourth down play. Nice fake. And they keep the drive alive, but the Cowboys come right back with good defensive quickness right there, and uh, Gordon Cooper can gain nothing, so it'll be second and ten. It's been some fun tonight. Fake punt, halfback passes, flea flickers. And some good defense on both sides, as we expected. Twelve minutes and 26 seconds to go now in the game. It's 21-7. It's also really in a situation, if they're going to sustain it, they've, they've really almost got to score now. Wide open. Nice pass. Tony Johnson makes the catch. Nice pass by Stevenson rolling left. And he goes out of bounds to the Oklahoma State 32 yard line. So, really the best conceived offensive play probably that Tulsa's had tonight. And the freshman came up with the catch. The official threw a flag also on the end of that play. And there may be a late hit. And let's see, it's a personal foul. Late hit. So they're going to attack 15 more onto this one. Johnson makes the catch. Raymond Hope, yes, hits him out of bounds. Uh, question, you know, that, that one's close. He hit him when he was on the border, but he was clearly on his way out of bounds. Well, you talk about a break. The ball now is inside the Oklahoma State 17-yard line. First and 10 in the OSU 17 with 12 minutes and 15 seconds to go. That is Tony Johnson's first career catch at the University of Tulsa. 
so just fresh. Comes a good time for Tulsa. The penalty is a bad break for Oklahoma State because the Golden Hurricane is driving right here with 12.15 to go. Stevenson gives it to Booker. He goes across inside the 15, down to about the 12. The gain is five. Tulsa getting some angle blocks now. Instead of going straight ahead, they're getting the angles. This is kind of a slash run here as it'll come kind of your right to left. You see the angles that the uh, offside people are picking up. They just really cut that monger in half and able to pick up a nice five yards on the play. Second and five, the ball's on the Oklahoma State 12-yard line. Stevenson is the quarterback. Again, to give us to Gordon Brown. This time the game is only about a yard. And that'll bring him a third down play, third and four. Brown and I, I believe, are getting his numbers. 21 carries now for Gordon Brown. He has 96 yards. I'm sure he'd like about 11 more. Leslie O'Neill was the man on the stop, and he helped Brown for a one-yard gain. So it's third and four. Balls on the Oklahoma State 11-yard line. Really, the key series of the game for Tulsa. And the field goal doesn't help them a lot right here. They really want to get into the end zone. Good fake. Stevenson, good fake. Does he have a receiver open? He does. The tight end cannot make the catch just out of bounds. He would have been out of bounds in any case out of the end zone on the left side. Tulsa is screaming for a pass interference call. It's close. I don't know if we'll see a replay or not, but it was awfully close. We are going to see it from the end zone. We're going to see it one more time. Stevenson's pass attempt. The rule didn't complete it. It was close. I believe we're going to see Here we go. From the end zone. Stevenson. Nice fake here. That uh, pulled everyone except Warren Thompson who fell down. And I guess we're just not going to see it. <laughs> anyway, it was close. Take my word for it. Fourth and four, and they're going to go for it. Fourth and four in the 11. Jack Cooper says a field goal does us no good at this point in the game. We need the touchdown. He also needs four yards for the first half. Stevenson rolling right. And he's going to be hit again by great defensive work by the Cowboys. Jim Krebs and Marvin Hawks, two guys that are really having their first good amount of playing time this year for the Cowboys. Oh, come on, Pat, smile. I think he's just going, woo. Cowboys take over. We'll be back in just a moment. I learned. Seven minutes, eight seconds to go in the game from Skelly Stadium. Cowboys have it first and ten. The ball's on the Oklahoma State 17 yard line. Oklahoma State leads by 14 points. Nice blocking up the middle. Sean Jones rambles across the 30, and the Cowboys have a first down. Sean Jones now over the 100 yard rushing mark for the game on 16 carries. He has about 118 yards on the end zone. We'll see good blocking. Derek Burton and David Tucker, along with Ralph Partita. Beautiful blocking up front. Sean Jones just some good running. Breaks a couple of tackles. Gets into the secondary. We have a Tulsa player hurt on the field. John some third quarter statistics in the third quarter for Oklahoma State is Sean Jones also going off the field a little slow. Oklahoma State 11 yards rushing the third quarter to Tulsa's 81 yards. Uh, Oklahoma State 32 yards passing to none for Tulsa in the third. So now total offense only a difference of 207 for the Cowboys, 220 for Tulsa. Eight penalties against Oklahoma State, six against Tulsa. You saw Sean Jones lead the field a little bit slowly. Tony Buford, linebacker for Tulsa, is the man who is being attended to down there at about the 22-yard line. He's shaking up a little bit. Player at a Tulsa bench. 11-0-3 to play. Oklahoma State at the 32. A good offensive move there. So I think we haven't seen There's uh, Steve Gage on the sideline. A possible fractured jaw. You see he has the ice on the left side of the jaw. He was roughed up on a play. Uh, Buford now coming off the field under his own power, a little woozy. I was going to say, though, uh, we haven't seen the three wide receiver set that we saw in the first half from Oklahoma State, and that totally confused us also. They went down and scored when they had that uh, formation in there. Ten minutes and 55 seconds to go in the game. Cowboys lead by 14, first and 10. The ball's at the 32-yard line. Kelly Cook was the ball carrier. Kane is about two, about to the 34. If you look at some of the tall two men along the sideline. Nothing fancy in the fourth quarter. Give it to a fullback. Turn into a power football game here. Also pushing OSU. OSU trying to push Tulsa. 10-20 to go in the game. Hills are 11 of 18 for 131 yards. Second and seven for Oklahoma State. And Cowboys in their own 34 yards. Hills looks to throw a little swing pass out to Thomas trying to dance for the yardage. He does have to 
about the 38. He's going to be about three yards short of the first down. Nice first step off the cut, and Thurman Thomas is going to have a good career here at Oklahoma State if he stays away from the injuries. Here goes Soldier. This is about the fifth time they've tried this play tonight. And they've been averaging about 7, 8, 10 yards with it every time. Ralph Partita there with a block on uh, Byron Jones. Thomas cuts back behind it. It's another six yards. Cowboys face the third and one to keep the drive live here with 9.42 to go in the game to keep the football. They're up 39 yard line. Kelly Cook and Thurman Thomas are set back behind Hilger. Hilger fakes for Thomas. Looks to throw quickly along the sideline. The pass is intended out there for J.R. Dillard. The reserve tight end of the Cowboys who just came into the game. And actually was overthrown. Rusty had to hurry that one a little bit because Tulsa was coming. It was actually about a third and three. The scoreboard said third and one. So the Cowboys felt they had to go to the air. Cooper, who had hardly any work in the first half, is getting a lot of action here in the second half. Remember, he dropped the snap on his last punt attempt and only got off a 19-yarder. So Tulsa's played very well defensively here in the second half. Gordon is the deep man for Tulsa. Cooper will kick it away from his own 28-yard line by the time he gets it in the air right there. Cooper makes the fair catch. Tulsa will take over at the 28-yard line. Two new shows premiere on CBS this Wednesday. At 7 o'clock, it's Charles in charge with Scott Bayo, followed by John Stamets and Kane Four in Dreams at 7.30. These hot new shows Wednesday night right here on TV now. Well, we finally got the defensive struggle that for a week we've been predicting. We, we look like fools in the first half. I can't help saying that. <laughs> Pat, we saw all kinds of offense. Pat Jones didn't say defensive struggle. He said hard-hitting game. We've had 9.24 to go in the game. 21-7, Cowboys lead. 34-yard punt. Stevenson, the quarterback, looks for a little running room. Gets a couple out to about the 30. You call that when he had a little bit of running room out there. That's, that's right. Again, trying to go to the short side. They had a lot of success on that 67-yard uh, touchdown drive they had going to the short side. Uh, Ham takes away the first option, so Stevenson goes out. Krebs there to turn him back inside, and Monger there to clean up. Oklahoma State dropping back at their ends now. Uh, they've got five defensive backs in the game. And again, good coverage by Oklahoma State. You know, the problem here for Tulsa is Tulsa does not have a pass game an option offense is a good offense to take the lead but it's not necessarily a good catch-up offense when you're trying to do things six or seven yards at a time you're down in the fourth quarter of eight and a half minutes to go and it's 21 to seven so the cowboys unless there's a couple of monumental breakdowns and big plays are going to win this game so pat jones is going to feel that offensively in the second half he didn't play as good as he could this game is being brought to you through the courtesy of the sports time cable network the new cox cable multimedia cable vision they're also pleased to announce it is now available as part of a basic service bringing you the best of Mid-America sports coverage, including Major League Baseball, and it's intercepted by Oklahoma State. Great play by Oklahoma State. Stevenson through the coverage right there, the man who made the interception Rod for the Cowboys. Brown. Rod, Rod Brown, Brown who made a couple against Bowling Green a couple of weeks ago, was named the defensive player of the week. Number five on a year for Rod Brown as he closes in on Bob Fenimore, who had nine in 1945. Just tried to dump it off. Oh, what happened there? Tight end fell down, Andrews. Rod Brown was there to take it. No flags on the play. Andrews is coming off. He may have just twisted his ankle when he made his cut. Stevenson uh, doing what he doesn't like to do, making a tackle. And Rod Brown now with five interceptions on the year. Cowboys with 11. Well, again, the defense does the job for Oklahoma State. So it's first and 10 at the Tulsa 29-yard line. Rusty Hilger brings his team out just over eight minutes to go in the game. John Jones gain of perhaps one. I was telling you about our friends at Sports Time that are helping to bring you this game tonight. Uh, Sports time now available as part of a basic service, bringing you the Mid-American sports coverage, including baseball, Big 8 basketball, wrestling, gymnastics, professional boxing, hockey, bowling, and much, much more. Sports time cable, which is Mid-American Sports Network, and we thank our good friends at Sports Time for helping us put on this game tonight. Seven minutes and 44 seconds to go in the game. The Cowboys' lead is 14, second and nine, as Jones picked up only one. Hilger looks over the middle again. Barry Hanna, who's been very busy tonight, makes the catch again. The game is about six. Man, a nice catch. The ball thrown behind him. By the way, I want to remind everybody that TV9 News, Newsline 9 Weekend Edition, coming up immediately following our football game is Hilger. It's Barry Hanna. Nice one-handed grab. He had to do a 360 degree, and I believe that's at least six tonight for Barry Hanna. Hilger to Salt and Pepper. Hilger to Chesley. was very popular back in 1981-82. And uh, Hilger to Hanna now. Has been busy tonight and has looked very good catching the ball. Now seven minutes even to go in the game. Cowboys lead by 14. It's a third and three in 
inside the Tulsa 25-yard line. Cowboys want to get Larry Roach in number seven. With 640 to go, that would be about 635 when Larry tried his field goal. Cowboys are going to go up 24 to 7. It'll be a 39 yard attempt. Roach is perfect inside the 40 so far this season. You're looking at a young man who has the best statistical career among Big Eight kickers of all time. He's got 60 career field goals. This might be 61. It is, and the Cowboys are on the board for the second time. Or rather, the first time in this second half, it's 24 to 7. Cowboys lead it, 6:21 to go, and we're back in a moment. Larry Roach, who just kicked a 39-yard field goal, will kick off for Oklahoma State. Horton and Vaughn are deep in Tulsa. Six minutes and 21 seconds to go in the game. The Cowboys now lead it 24 to 7. Horton lets the ball go out of the end zone. Tulsa will take over first and 10 at its own 20 yard line. With that last pass, Barry had a rush to Hilder now tonight. 13 of 21 for 140 yards, no interceptions, no touchdowns, but he has led the team downfield for four scores tonight. Richie Stevenson comes on. He's been the quarterback through all of the second half and uh, right to the end of the first half. Steve Gage took a severe hit to the jaw and they are fearful he might have a broken jaw. He's nursing an ice pack along the sideline and either has had an X-ray or will have an X-ray, but we won't see Steve Gage again tonight. Stevenson is the quarterback, 621 to go. Being pressured, and he simply throws it away because there are Cowboys all over the place. Nice job there by Stevenson. As one of the photographers along the sideline gets decked. Welcome to college football. Stevenson, if he would have thrown that, but it was six points for the Cowboys. His receivers blanket it. A nice uh, heads-up play for a shot. It's been a homecoming crowd that was right about 40,000, maybe 39.5 here tonight. At, uh, Skelly close Stadium. To Very close to the record because the record was a little over 39,000 against Oklahoma State two years ago, I believe. Richie Stevenson gets his running back young. He is followed up by a couple of people in the game. Thank you very much. My name is Leslie O'Neill. I'm from Little Rock, Arkansas, and you're just known for a loss. Look at O'Neill. Look at O'Neill. He's, he's excited about it. He's told me during the week. Just not quite on his execution where he'd like it. He executed this one very nicely. Almost a fumble there. That's your textbook tackle. Put the helmet between the numbers, wrap your arms around it, and drive him into the turf. Got some help from Harry Roberts there. He loves to hit too. 547 to go in the game. Cowboys have got this one well in hand. Defensively, they played pretty well most of the night. Offensively, a little spotty in the second half. Stevenson looks to throw on the run. Kelly has got it out of bounds. with count it does. Kelly's really the only receiver that the uh, Hurricane have. He, uh, again, eight balls coming into the game. I believe he's had two or three tonight. The second leading receiver is out of the backfield. I believe we're going to see this one more time. Let's see, one foot inbounds. Let's see if he's got it. Ooh, I don't oh, know about that any one. inbounds, did he? Let the, and the official's looking right at it, so. Maybe he's got a invisible. 5.33 to go in the game now. Tulsa with the football first and 10 on the 32-yard line. Stevenson looks to throw and again Kelly makes the catches this one's going to count it does same play ran it to the other side I want to see this one again too I, this guy must have a third foot that's invisible <laughs> he's dragging let's check this one out that other one was definitely out of bounds again two officials looking at this one there we come and Kelly's got it where's his foot hey he didn't have that one either <laughs> he was out of bounds again and two officials looking at that one First and 10, the ball's on the 43. Stevenson looks to throw, going for all of it. He's got Kelly out there. Cowboys might make the interception. Oh! Is that Stanley Blair out there? Yeah, that's three of those he's had this year that have rolled around. Stanley, Stanley's like Thurman Thomas before he got his touchdown. Close, but no cigar. And Blair, Blair almost had one against San Diego State last week. Kelly had an excellent chance at this football, and Blair just... Uh, really wanted to make sure he tackled Kelly and then watched it roll off the hands. Let's see, Kelly now three catches tonight, 37 yards. Now he's got one catch and two phantom catches. Second and 10, the ball's in the Tulsa 43-yard line. Clock will start with the play does. 5.20 to go in the game. Kelly goes in motion now from left to right. Pitch back goes to Young, end around. 
This is Greg Petty with a football toss to 50. Got some blocking. Goes out of bounds inside the 40 at about the 39. And make sure I have the right man with the football. Greg Petty is the man who had it for Tulsa. If at first it doesn't work, try it again. That play was stuffed in the uh, first half for a loss. And Tulsa coming back to it. Petty will get it on the reverse. I believe the second time they've run this play this year to Petty. Good blocking out front. Tavy Hampton had it if they would have run the basic play. But coming back, Stevenson out there throwing some block. There's Mark Moore. He's tied up by Stan Fields, the center. Fields can bench press 415, so he no trouble with Mark Moore. Just under five minutes to go in the game now. It's another first down for Tulsa. First and ten. The ball's on the Oklahoma State 38-yard line. Stevenson, he saw the blitz coming and, and headed for the turf. That's um, It's almost as if there was some kind of mix-up on the, the snap. I know there was not, but why would a guy just try to a quarterback plunge on first down? Like well, that? sometimes a center, when he sees guys jump, in the Cowboys would come with the blitz that time and two guys were very close to being off sides jumping around and sometimes the center will just go ahead and snap it and without being the right kind of try to snap and get off Stevenson by surprise yeah. and all he could do was fall forward he really didn't even gain a yard about a foot it's still a second and ten the ball still at the 38 yard line clock is moving four minutes 14 seconds to go in game this time he's going into the end zone for Eric Borders and Borders does not make the catch, oh. but he came very close. Mark Moore got his hands on it and it looked like knocked it right back to Borders. I thought Borders I had it. I thought Borders had it too. We're going to check the end of this play right here. Mark Moore was beaten on the play, but it, a little burst of speed. He tipped it away, and if Borders would have kept his hands out, he would have had it. Of course, that's an instinctive it. thing to pull your hands in like you're going to grab high there. Four minutes and four seconds to go. Third and ten now for Stevenson. Very close six points. Cowboys show blitz. Man in motion is Kelly as he comes across from right to left. The give is to Brown. He might try that back pass. I think he wants to. He's got some running room. Inside 30. Goes out of bounds about the 28. Going to be short of the first down. The defensive play there from the Cowboys. I believe it's Rod Brown coming up for the free safety. That was the halfback pass all the way, John. You called it. Watch him look up right here. But nobody's there. And he threw a touchdown pass. I believe last year in the Oklahoma game was it? No, it was Booker that threw it in the OU game last or two years ago. But uh, just short of the first down, they'll go for it here. 3:56 to go in the game. 24-7 Cowboys. Fourth and one. Balls in the 29-yard line. This is simply trying to get something on the board time for Tulsa. Stevenson, and I don't know. Second effort, perhaps got the first down, but it's going to be very close. There's another one of those which official wins the argument of where to put it. His first effort, he did not have it. Second effort perhaps. Cowboys think it is short. Thursday night is the season it's short. premiere of Notch Landing. Tune in at 9 for all the drama of one of the most popular nighttime shows. Notch Landing Thursday night right here on TV 9. You'll see Pat Jones right there and he's pretty happy. Looks like he's asking where's the car? <laughs> Who's driving home tonight? Good defensive stand there by the Cowboys. Uh, Tulsa went a lot. It's been working here in the second half. Straight dive play and the Cowboys stuck. Three minutes and 52 seconds to go in the game. The Cowboys with Rusty Hills here in command. We'll see what they do offensively. Now the game is won. The Cowboys in a very tight formation with only one flanker out to the right side. Straight up the middle. It might be a touchdown. Sean Jones might have a hot touchdown. Not quite. The man who caught him from behind, Nate Harris, an all-conference defensive back for Tulsa. Sean Jones is making up for last week. All big eight last year. Nate Harris sitting a touchdown. Uh, we'll see it again. John Jones tonight approaching a 200 yard with that burst, probably around 170, 175 yards, right up the pipe, right here. Kelly Cook kicks out. Derek Burton, 171 yards for Sean Jones. Derek Burton and uh, Ralph Partita, and let's see David Tucker, the center, a 30 a 54 yard run for Sean. Jones. Great blocking up front. By the way, Newsline 9 coming up as soon as the game is over tonight on TV 9. Three minutes and 25 seconds to go in the game. Cowboys first and 10. The ball's in the Tulsa 17-yard line. Straight ahead again is only a couple. Boy, that's Will Tim. I think Timmons is in the ballgame now for Oklahoma State. His first carry of the night. Maybe his first carry of the season, am I correct? Uh, he might have had one in San Diego State. I'm not sure. Let's check it. You see Pat Jones there as he I studied these things. I've been the on copies of them. <laughs> Let's see. Rushing. <laughs> Clock is moving now with less than three minutes to go. Second and ten. Ball is uh, on the 17-yard line, so really not much of a game. Maybe a foot on that last play. 
Pitch back comes to Thomas inside the 20, inside the 10. He goes out of bounds at about the three. Good running by Thurman Thomas. Pat Jones is sending in Sean Jones. He wants Jones to get the touchdown, I believe. Here's the replay of it. Here comes Power. Tulsa's been running power in the second. Oh, look at the block right there by Will Timmons. Cut down two of the Hurricane players coming over. Myers saving the touchdown. Watch Sean Jones get it. I'm going to be the coach here. First Sean and goal, and I'm sure you're right. He brought Sean, Sean Jones in to get a touchdown. First and goal at the three. So the Cowboys have four chances from here. Two minutes and 44 seconds to go in the game. The Cowboys seek to go 4-0 in the 1984 season. Sean Jones, nothing there. Man, lost a yard. Tulsa was looking for it, too. I, I looked like Rusty was going to audibleize a little bit as Tulsa stacked it in tight. But he tried to give Sean a chance to make He got it down there after all. Clock continues to run. Two minutes and 28 seconds to go in the game. No matter what happens here on the series of downs, of course, the Cowboys will go to 4-0 in the season. They will stay somewhere in the top 10 in the Associated Press ratings. And next week, they will travel to Lincoln, Nebraska. Second down, Hilger makes the move to the left side. Nice pitch out, touchdown, OSU. The old option play. It is interesting, Rustin Hilger has never been an option quarterback. He's not quick enough to be, but that one was run textbook perfect. Pat Jones told me before the game, Rusty Hilger is not an option quarterback. But they put this one in just to give teams something else to think about. Take the Timmons. Rusty is going to take a hit, but gets off to Sean Jones. He deserved it. His second uh, touchdown of the game. That Let's was see. beautiful as Jones soars and a nice pitch out from Hilger as they got the defense to come into the quarterback. Larry Roach's point after is good. There is a fly on the play, however. There's some discussion downfield, John. There's a flag on the play. It, it makes... Uh, I see. Uh, what point is good because the penalty is against uh, the University Tulsa, so it's 31-7. Cowboys need two minutes and eight seconds to go, and uh, the fans start to leave. This one's over. The only question is the final score. We're going to have to get the uh, legal participation. A legal on participation. The what that exactly means happened on that plate, we're not certain. Sean Jones now with 21 carries, 168 yards. Okay. Well, we've got news line nine. As you look at Pat Jones coming up right after the game, just a couple of minutes. And right after that, Tony Sellers will have all the scores and highlights around the country. Our college football scoreboard show. Illegal participation. I don't know if that means there was an extra man on the field or what the situation was for Tulsa, but maybe a fan got out there. Or something. It's, it's, it's probably too many men on the field because they had trouble on the punt uh, earlier in this quarter. Too many you know, men what's interesting, there. it's a 15, is it a 15-yard penalty? He's got the ball out at the Tulsa 45-yard yeah. line. That's a biggie. Folks, I'm a little bit uh, confused, to be honest with you. Illegal participation. I don't know if it means the 12th man on the field. But Larry Roach is going to kick off at the 45-yard line. Now, so he, he he's going to have to squib it because yeah. he doesn't want to kick it out of bounds. He'll get it at the 30. Yeah. So uh, I guess the rules makers consider that a serious violation, illegal participation, whatever that Dang, means. Rules say 11. Got to have got to have 11 out there. Maybe they sent some, some kind of animal dressed in a suit out there or something. I, I, that used to be on sportsmanlike conduct, though, didn't it? When you had too many people. There's a legal, at least our little book. Roach kicks. Oh, he just drilled into the stands. <laughs> Let him come out of the 30. Who cares? <laughs> They're going to get the ball at the 30-yard line. Larry just kicked it through the upright hey, 45 it's yards away. Two minutes and eight seconds to go in the game. And 31-7, uh, the Cowboys have Look got to laugh out there. <laughs> he just drilled it. Why not? Let's come out. He hates that rule anyway. So, and it does seem like a strange rule to be honest. It penalizes the guys who can kick long. It. Well, if you got the good foot, you have to make sure you don't put all your power into it if the wind's behind. You don't get any benefit from the penalty either. So you might as well have 15 guys out there to try to block the extra point. Give us to Booker across the 35, maybe to the 36-yard line. Cowboys defense will give that kind of stuff up right now. Head 31-7. It's good for the Cowboys' standpoint to get that late touchdown, I believe, because the offense didn't look too great in the third, first part of the fourth quarter. So instead of ending on that kind of a sour note with all penalties and stuff, not moving the football, you end on a good note. That's a nice try. Minute 42 go in the game. Stevenson is the quarterback. Second and four, the game was six. Stevenson's got a lot of people around him. John Washington is one. 
think Leslie O'Neill is the first one in there again. Leslie O'Neill having an outstanding ball game. We're going to take a look at this defensive play. Watch number 99, Submarine under. John Washington chasing from behind. And John Washington got him. Leslie O'Neill slowed him up enough that Washington could get to him. Jim Krebs, the linebacker, is a man who is down and being attended to by the Oklahoma State trainers. And it looks like it's an injury possibly to his left knee or ankle as he has helped off the field at about the 40-yard line. Pat Jones has cleared the bench now. Wholesale substitution. I uh, see uh, George Cumbie in there, the cousin of, uh, of the great uh, Kenneth Cumbie. Kenneth George Kenneth. I couldn't think of his first name. I remember he hit hard, though. And a lot of other folks in there. Clock is moving. Minute seven to go. Stevenson dropping. He has the bootleg <laughs> fake to the right side. Looking to throw. Throws into coverage. And it's a wonder that one wasn't intercepted. There's Rod Brown. He almost had number six on the season. He can't believe he missed it. Number 57 in there for the Cowboys at linebacker is uh, Brian Fitzgerald seeing his first action of the year. He took that fake like I've never seen anyone take a fake before. He actually turned his back on the quarterback. There was no one between him and quarterback but he didn't see him. He took the fake so poor. <laughs> he needs to get in there and take some of those. Stevenson will put it away. This will be history in less than Robbie Riley's just, Riley's just gonna let it roll and the Cowboys will over wherever. Again, the game's going to end here in 46 seconds, and we'll have the news coming up for you immediately after that, our college football scoreboard show, so stay tuned. Mike Carpenter, and Jennifer Eve, and Paul Boucher will have the news and the weather, and then Tony Sellers will have all the sports for you from around the country, and of course, uh, highlights again of that major upset day, Nebraska losing at Syracuse, and that's one of the bigger upsets of the last several years, to be honest. Douglas Looney having crow pie tonight for dinner. Again, Sports Illustrated saying for the second year in a row that Nebraska is a great football team, maybe the best in the country, and I'm sure Nebraska's very good. All but that was a pretty right statement to make. All Pat Jones says is don't put us on the cover this week, please. 46 seconds to go in the game. Ronnie Williams, the freshman quarterback out of Texas, is in there for the Cowboys and simply falls on it. And, uh, see a lot of him in future years. Probably not much this year if Rusty stays healthy. Ask Pat about playing Ronnie Williams, maybe alternating on a couple of plays. He doesn't want to put the freshman into a situation with the game still on the line yet. He doesn't want to put that pressure on him where he might tense up and just drop a snap from center or something. But he only wants him in and clean up operations, and this one didn't become a cleanup job until just a few seconds ago. That's what this is. He's got 12 seconds to get the playoff. There's 17 seconds left in the game. And that's going to be the ball game. That'll be it, folks. As the clock winds down, Pat Jones comes over to shake hands with John Cooper, and the Cowboys win it. The final score here at Skelly Stadium, 31-7. Oklahoma State the winner in this football game tonight. So, Ed, the uh, Cowboys did not play all that well offensively in the second half, but obviously their defense is, is going to keep them in every game they play. But they did get it into the end zone four times, and uh, that's a lot better than they've done the last two games. Great first half. you got to say, from defensive standpoint and from an offense standpoint. That was a nice uh, 30 minutes there. Third quarter was pretty bad on both sides. And then fourth quarter, great defense. And then the offense, after all the penalties and stuff, you always like to end on a good note. And they've ended on a good note. And they've ended on a victory. Maybe move up the poles a little bit further. Cowboys win at 31-7. We're back at Skelly Stadium in a moment. Nobody but nobody can.